Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Into the 99 podcast where we've got 99 cards because Commander is number one. I'm your Necromancer with all the answers. Necrozak joined by my two best buds, Dan and Salty. How are you gentlemen doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. Uh, excited to talk about some cards. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I'm um, excited to also talk about some cards. I'm also doing good. Thanks so much for asking, Zach. I would be doing better if it stopped snowing here. It is uh, <laughs> for anyone else out in Canada like Slothia must it just doesn't stop it literally no. goes from like minus 10 and just like snowstorm blizzards to plus 13 in a matter of like five hours so I just have no idea what to wear how to how to prepare to drive it's uh it's quite the ordeal yeah it's it's snowing oh, mm-hmm. it, it was blizzarding <laughs> we, we were getting like warnings uh this weekend that we could have up to 50 centimeters of snow this weekend uh yeah. oh it's it's summer here. I'm literally in like shorts and a t-shirt. Oh yeah, like Friday, like Friday it was like three or four inches of snow on the ground, and Thursday mm-hmm. it was plus ten. Yep. And right oh. now it's right now it's plus six. Yeah, it's, there's just no there's no winning with it. But other than that, I've been great. I was uh obviously pre-release was this weekend, so the reason I was in such a rush to get home was getting my cards, getting everything cracked and the the set is really, really exciting. I'm going to say my opinion outright. And first off, thanks everyone for listening and glad, glad to hear everyone else is doing well. I'll let Zach do his, uh, his, his pre-speech before we go and you can see who to support. But I just wanted to say, this is the set I was looking forward to the most of the year, I would say, because I've been so vocal about liking Strixhaven, so vocal about liking Akoria, and the same with Zach. Zach also loves Akoria. And I was mm-hmm. a little let down with my opening experience with it. I still value wise got stuff like I, I got valuable cards, but it just it wasn't the same as opening previous sets. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I was almost going to buy a box last night and I just kind of talked myself out of it because I know there are a lot of mythics that I wanted and a lot of like specialty versions of cards that I wanted. And I just I didn't want to open a box and feel like I got let down. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so that's just kind of what I think is, I, I just, for the first time, I've I honestly think singles have been the better option, and there's definitely a bunch I'm missing and will have to go by, but still fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And you got, you got a set boost, or you got a set, yeah, set booster box or whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and even then, it's still... Like, like yeah. I said, the value <laughs> was there in cards, but it just... It lacked that excitement of the other things. I saw a ton of repeat cards. There was a ton of like the, there's a card cycle in the set that lets you exile it from your hand and you can, your lands will tap for one of the three colors in the crime family thing. And it, I don't know, it's just not, maybe it's like good in a different format, but it just seemed like a wasted uncommon slot that constantly popped up like nonstop, like probably one a pack. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But like my uh my pessimism aside, there's lots of things in the set that I was excited for. Um, Zach, you can let everyone know who's who's sponsoring the show and everything, and then we'll jump right into stuff. So yeah, if you guys end up seeing something that you really want, but you're worried that like Dan or myself, you're not gonna be able to open it, you could actually go to abyssproxyshop.com and use promo code IT99 for ten percent off your first order to find the card that you want and see if you get it, you know. Ex- cheaper than what it would be if you went to go buy it yeah and if you hear us on spotify apple wherever you're listening to podcasts really uh feel free to rate the podcast it really does help us out getting discovered thank you again so much to everyone who does tune in every week and listen it means a lot to us that you like to hear me and my friends rant about magic it's something i always look forward to is just talking about my favorite game and i love that you guys join us every week so thank you so much and again that rating does really help out so just yeah like share send it to your friends and leave a review good or bad you can tell yeah. me how wrong i am yeah on spotify it's really important right now if you guys can take a few minutes to leave a review that's going to help us get found by a lot of new people a lot quicker because it goes into the algorithm because people are leaving comments so yeah 
And with that, let's uh, let's jump into spoilers. I know we're a little late with this, uh, late with it, but life kind of gets in the way and stuff. So we'll just jump right into the spoilers. Uh, we're going to talk the main set first, and we start off with All Seen Arbiter. It's four and double blue for five four Avatar. Ah, Avatar with flying. <laughs> when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you draw two cards, then discard a card. So that's it's pretty solid looting to be honest, especially in blue decks where you can be drawing four, discarding one for that with most enchantments. And it's whenever mm-hmm. you discard a card, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X minus O until your next turn, where X is the number of different mana values among cards in your graveyard. It's, um, uh, I think it's got lots of utility for like a cycling kind of deck specifically. See, I look at it as more of a reanimator target. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah, I really like this, um, and I actually plan on picking up this card for my Urtai deck. Um it's just it's really good it's a you know decent stats with good evasion but also being able to you know loot like that going too deep to maybe hit another target or you know there's something away that you don't necessarily need and then you get a um you know a neg on a creature that's that's pretty good right yeah um i'm assuming you want this next one zach yes of course i do (laughs) <laughs> uh, the next one is angel of suffering it's three double black for a five three nightmare angel with flying if damage will be dealt to you prevent that damage and mill twice that many cards also great reanimator target <laughs> well and that's that's everything you want a deck that's just filling your graveyard with stuff saving mm-hmm. you damage like that is killer um i'm yeah. sure i'm sure people have already thought about this but this would be the one time i would buy an eldrazi and put in a deck Oh, just so that you can, yeah, reset the graveyard? Yes. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, I saw this one on release, and I, I love Angels as a Tribe in general, so I was pretty happy with it. But anything that says prevent that damage is mm-hmm. is pretty solid, especially when you're the thing being prevented damage to. Mm-hmm. I think there's definitely mm-hmm. ways to really, really utilize this card. And especially, um, I've been... For anyone who doesn't know, I've been ripping decks apart and like putting things together and building from like my collection again, instead of yeah. going out and like spam buying cards, which has been kind of nice. But uh, this, I think, really has like a spot, especially in like a Mimeoplasm deck, which is a deck I'm just like re-putting back together, going back to some like older, forgotten about commanders. And I think that this has such a home in a deck like that. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I was thinking as well. Um, I still have my Mimeoplasm put together. It's still one of my like longest standing decks. And this card could go in there. It could go in my Carador, Yamori deck. There's a lot of just like, it's it's one of the mythics I really want. And I feel like it had been one of those. If I tried to open, I probably wouldn't have got. I, I did end up pulling one of these. And I also think it just really has a home in Moldrotha as well. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, that's. It's got such a cool ability, especially speaking of cool abilities. This next one is the one I was the most excited for. Didn't pull a single one, didn't even see one, didn't pull anything close to it. Uh, it's Arcane Bombardment, and it's my favorite card from the set. It's four double red. I'm going to say that a lot. By the way, I have lots of favorite cards from the set. So <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But it is one of my favorite cards. Uh, it's whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, exile an instant or sorcery at random from your graveyard. First off, I love chaotic effects. Love it. Then you copy each card exiled with Arcane Bombardment. You can cast any number of the copies without paying their mana costs. I think it's such a fun, huge, like, throw everything at people repeatedly card with, uh, like, especially, like, in a deck like a Kess or anything like that. I just I love it. Yeah, we don't see a lot of effects like this. This is a very niche card, and I think it's a very like strong niche card and that's a lot of this set honestly there are just so many like very powerful cards that like are in pretty high rarity slots that have earned their rarity slots i'm gonna put this in like the veyran voice of duality because again like anything that copies triggering twice is is a good thing but i've already looked at it and there's you'll you'll definitely kill yourself if you're playing like a traditional is it spell slinger deck because your graveyard typically is going to be full of things like a brainstorm, like a, I guess it's a May cast, so you won't kill yourself. That's that's nice that it doesn't force the cast, but I'm dumb. Yeah. I would kill myself with it. This is what I'm definitely putting in uh, Calamax. Oh, yeah. Oof. Thick boy on this deck. Yeah, mm-hmm. Cal- in Calamax, it would be an absolute monster. Mm-hmm. 
All right, I'm going to take this next one because not only do I really like it, but I think it has some of the best art in the entire set. <laughs> it's Body Launderer. It's two double black for a 3-3 three, three Ogre Rogue with Death Touch. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, Body Launderer con uh, conveys. And then whenever Body Launderer dies, return another target non-rogue creature card with equal or lesser power from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> this, this card is so good. <laughs> Return another target. Yeah, it just it's any target too. That's mm -hmm. really good. I and I absolutely, I absolutely love this art so much. It is really <laughs> cool artwork. Yeah, it's very horror so movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the guy's little little swoopy hair. Yeah. <laughs> just I just good. love it. Yeah. yeah. Um. But really, this this is a card I'm probably going to need like six copies of, and I only have decks that have black in them so like he's just it's very powerful um yeah i'm just super when i saw this card i was just super excited about it yeah that's uh mm -hmm. that's a very good ability especially with like how easy you can go into like sacrifice loops like it's just another reanimator i like that mm -hmm. sloth you uh, want to take this nonsense absolutely this is probably the card that i was most excited from from this set uh bootlegger stash five in a green for an artifact land to control have tap create a treasure token that's a pretty cool Oof, card. Yeah. yeah, man. I just built that Mike and Will deck, and then this got spoiled, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> There's, uh, I've seen so many people like complain. They're like, "Well, with Time Sieve, you can just go infinite." I'm like, "Yeah, well, Time Sieve can go infinite with a lot of things. That's not the yeah. like metric of if something's broken." Yeah. The yeah, Thopter Assembly yeah. goes goes infinite with Time Sieve as well. Like. No one's no one's crying about Thopter Assembly being banned. Like it's, I've seen a lot of people complaining about this, but uh, Treasure's got a lot of support in this one, and I think that there's, like, I think that there's a good home for it in a lot of decks. And like, yeah, sure, it's breakable, but lots of things are run removal. Yeah, and not everybody's gonna be running this to be broken. Yeah, I'm, I'm making oh, that. Uh, there's one of the commander cards. It's we'll get to it when we get to it, but it puts treasure tokens into play under opponent's control. That's where, mm -hmm. like, I pulled one of these. It's going in that deck. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, not everything has to be broken just because it is broken. And I don't right. think this is that broken. It just lets you make treasure tokens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the big thing for me too is that, like, granted, it is in green, so like the six CMC probably isn't that bad, but it's still six CMC green. You know, like, it's an artifact, so you can find some ways to cheat it out. It's in green, you can find some ways to cheat it out, sure. But still, 6 EMC is rather lofty. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, and it, if it sits there for, if, if you let it sit on the board for five turns uncontested and they have, like, a seed borne out, sure. Sure, it's going to be a problem. But, like, lots of cards in those same circumstances are a problem. A bootlegger stash is just, it gives you a treasure token and the land already taps for mana, so... It's not really that big of a difference of what it's doing. Other, if you have untapped shenanigans going on, it gets stronger. But untapped shenanigans are already strong. Yep. Yeah. Also, you know, we have cards that are much more powerful that do something similar. So I, I don't know. Yeah. We could go on and on about it. I just hate my absolute worst thing is when someone's like, "Oh, this card needs to be banned before we've even had a chance to play with it." Well, yeah, everyone, I've seen so many people just be like, it gives you too much mana. I'm like, have you had someone cast a Jessica's Will before? Yeah. yeah. Because that also gives you a lot of mana. I like, I in a lot of like games that we play, like I see a lot of turn one Jessica's Wills go off, and yeah, it's a good card. I don't crap. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Yes, or, or even uh, Dockside. Yeah, like, exactly. Like Dockside is also really good. Like it just, I don't know, there's, in this set somewhere in here, there's some treasure hate. We'll get to it when we get to it, but I don't mm -hmm. know. I, I think that a six mana artifact with no inherent protection isn't that strong. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's um I think every color can remove artifacts. Does black have artifact removal? Mm, I've not feed the swarm. Or is that just enchantment? That's enchantment. So so maybe so maybe you get the you get a you get the drop on mono black decks. Uh Noxious Gearhawk, I wanna say. Oh yeah, black is full of like destroy permanent things. We're we're good. Yeah. Yeah, anyways, we've, right. we've ranted about this one. Um, we've got yeah. Elspeth Resplendent. Uh, it's three double white, uh, legendary planeswalker Elspeth, five loyalty starting. 
Plus one, choose up to one target creature, put a one-on counter on it, and a counter from among flying, first strike, lifelink, or vigilance on it. That is kind of reminiscent of Akoria stuff, and I, I kind of do like they want to bring those token or the those kind of counters back. I love those. Uh, that's right. This card's this card's sweet, but the unfortunate thing for me is just in the wrong colors. Yeah, fair. Uh, yeah. It's minus three. Let's look at the top seven cards of your library. You can put a permanent with mana value CMC three or less from among it onto the battlefield with a shield counter on it. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order, which is really, really good if you can... Again, it's a little high cost and a little slow for like uh, like a competitive thing, but like y- you can get like pretty good enchantments off or like creatures off with that shield counter. A uh, shield counter is a new mechanic in the set. I'll go over that. It's the first time something will be damaged or destroyed you... Uh, remove the shield counter instead. So I, I think they're pretty cool. And then it's minus seven is create five, three, three white angel creature tokens with flying. Seems so, fine. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to take this next one too, because I like this. Uh, it's even the score. It's X and triple blue for basically a blue sun zenith that only can hit you. Uh, but it costs three blue less if an opponent has drawn four more cards this turn. So it basically turns into if someone is just going hard with their draw, an X draw spell at instant speed, which I really, really like. I've got a lot of decks that that slots into really well. Yeah, I saw this card and I was like, I think Dan's gonna love this thing. Yeah, it's yeah. uh, I, I'm a I'm a fiend for Blue Sun Zenith, so. Hmm. It's just fun. Um, uh, why don't you guys take the next one? Oh, and then I got to take the next two after that. I've, I got a problem. Yeah, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, the next one is Falco Spara Pact Weaver, uh, one and Bant for a three three. Legendary creature Bird Demon with Flying and Trample. Uh, Falco Sparrow, Pact Weaver, enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it, and you may look at the top card of your library at any time, and you may cast spells from the top of your library by removing a counter from a creature you control in addition to paying their other costs. While I do think this is a cool card, I think the ability to remove counters equal to the mana cost to cast spells would have been such a good mechanic. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would have made this such a fun. Um, my my spoiler alert here is I was let down with basically every band card in this set. That's you know pretty yeah. much how I always feel. That's one of my favorite. Yeah, exactly. I felt like I was <laughs> I felt like I was Zach when I was looking at these spoilers. I was like, none of this is for me. It's it's all about counters and proliferation and like I've got enough decks that already do that. That's that's nothing new or exciting to me. And I was kind of hoping a little bit more of the Strixhaven like color bend what they're doing. And then they like it's the brokers, right? Like their whole thing was like you read the fine print. So I kept talking all this, all this good smack about how excited I was for like a bant politics deck, and it's none of that. There's no politics in it. There's yeah. there's no making a, a deal, a shrewd deal. Like they're they're just like oh, we put the bird in a business suit. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know. It's uh, it's just I was I was let down by bant. Does anyone else, does anyone else have opinions on these? <laughs> It's in the colors I don't really care about. I'll be honest. I I, I kind of feel the same way as, as you, Dan. I I love Bent. Yeah, and oh, I was so just kind of I was kind of let down. Like the some of the individual green cards, some of the individual white cards, some of the individual blue cards are awesome. But basically but... everything in the Bent pie, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> 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 just, wow. I was so excited, like I said, for like all these crime families. A bunch of them were letdowns, but like this one is, like I said, the whole like read the fine print. I was like, yes, bant politics. We're going to see like uh, make these deals with me. They're going to benefit me and come out on top. And it's just like, perhaps I give you a shield counter and we make it so that bant has goad for some reason. Why does bant want goad? It's like the anti-combat colors. And it's just like, what if we what if we made them attack? I'm like, it's not good. Yeah. yeah, it's not great. The next card is great and is beautiful mm-hmm. and one of my favorite artworks of the set and probably my real favorite card of the set, but we'll see how long that lasts for. It's Halo Fountain. Uh, two and a white for an artifact with, like I said, beautiful artwork. It has one white and a tap. Untap a tapped creature you control. You create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. That's great in mono white for one mana. You can untap an important creature. Uh, I play Silvala a lot. I have like three different Silvala decks, the uh, the Selesnya one. So this yeah. is a great card in any of those decks. Then it has a second ability for two white. You untap two tapped creatures you control, draw a card. Also a great ability, the ability to untap two things. Super, super good. I'm sure we can all find things. But it's really the bread and butter at the bottom. 
for five white. You untap 15 tapped creatures you control, and you win the game. <laughs> I love it. Uh, this is like, I'm going to put this in like so many Boros decks as a win condition that it's not even funny. I'm going to just <laughs> spam people. I'm going to smash them late game with these little dinky 1-1 one, one tokens. And they'll be like, okay, you deal 15 damage. And then I'm going to drop this bad boy down and hope no one has a crossing grip. Yeah. Uh, even with a crossing grip, the, the effect's still on the stack. I, I, I love it. I love this card. I figured you would. Yeah. Like, this is a very damn card. Uh, it's, it's got everything I like. It makes tokens. It draws a card. It wins the game. It's uh, This is my card you, set for sure. Could you imagine if it had landfall? If, if Landfall and an ETB trigger? Oh man! Oh man! <laughs> Dan would Dan would have just like died. And then the next one is another one of my favorite cards, and the one that actually got me the most excited for this Halo Fountain. And it's it's just this big fat cat demon, and I, I love it. I love every part of it. Uh, it's Jetmere Nexus of Rebels. Again, it's beautiful artwork. the The alternate art is pretty cool too, for sure. But like, I just love like the coloring in the normal one. Uh, it's one and Naya. So a red, white, and a green. It's a legendary cat demon 5-4. Good stats already. Creatures you control get 1-0 and have vigilance as long as you control three or more creatures, which counts Jetmere, which is awesome. Creatures you control also get 1-0 and have trample as long as you control six or more creatures. And creatures you control also get 1-0 and have double strike as long as you control nine or more creatures. So if you have, if you're playing just normal token strategies, you're getting plus three plus oh double strike trample vigilance on your creatures from the command zone that is awesome yeah, yeah. it's insane that's really really strong yeah it's um i i like that it's something that can kind of just drop the game ender on the table and just progressively get stronger and stronger with tokens like uh, again even one one tokens becoming four one tokens with vigilance trample double strike is is massive yeah the stats that this card can like put out is just it's so insane to me. Like, it's one of those that I'm excited to see Naya get some. Like, Naya always gets some kind of support like this, but they. I feel like it's always been like, to me, it's been kind of boring. Yeah. But this card, like, am I gonna set and build a Jet Mirror deck? No, probably not. But if I got this card and like I had the ability to do so, I would because it just seems fun. Yeah, I'm building my girlfriend a Jet Mirror uh, cat travel deck. Yeah, see, like, that's another thing, that's too. Fun. You could go Cat Tribal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good, clean, fun. Yeah, you, um, you, can also just, you can also just do random creature tokens. Something that's really I, important to remember as well is at no point does it say other creatures. So with nine creatures or eight other creatures out, your commander's also an 8-4 Vigilance Trample Double Striker at mm -hmm. four mana, which is a, a pretty bonkers stats on a commander, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, and I like that you're not locked into a tribe specifically. Like you could, you could do cats, but like yeah, I, just, you could I like cats. I, I, Arabo's. Uh, I've seen too many Arabo decks. I've built too many Arabo decks, right? So it's nice to have like a new, a new fun one. There's actually a lot of cool like su uh, support for it. Uh, Rin and Siri kind of functions better as a like mixture of both. Like you don't want to run Rin and Siri as just a cat deck because then you can just only gain life. I think. Yeah. I don't know. Rin and Siri was a really cool card too, but I'll uh, I'll stop ranting about the fat cat demon. It's, it's, it's such a silly looking card. I love it. Um, it's my turn to rant. I was gonna say, yeah, Zach, are you taking this one? Oh, yes, sir. All right. So we know Naya is cool. We know that Abzan is my favorite. But there are two other color combinations that I absolutely love that just we kind of not dealt with for a while because we've not been getting the shards. We've been getting wedges. So when I saw we get Grixis love and we got Jun love, I was so excited. And this was the first like Grixis card that I saw from the set. And Dan and I were texting and I was he's like, this is probably you, right? I said, yes, this is me. This <laughs> is me. This is a Lord Xander, the collector. He's four blue, black, red. For a 6-6 six, six legendary creature vampire demon noble, obviously already better than cat demon. Great tribes, by the way. Great tribes. <laughs> when Lord Xander, the collector, enters the battlefield, target opponent discards half of their cards in their hand, rounded down. Okay, yeah. that's pretty good. Pretty that's, good. All, that's all he does. Great, great ability. Whenever Lord Xander attacks, defending player mills half their library rounded down. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> when Lord Sander dies, target opponent sacrifices half the non-land permits they control rounded down. 
This card is nuts. I I was thinking that it was a translation error when I first saw it. I was like, this has to be. <laughs> the stats are already great. Seven for a six six is honestly fine. Seven for a six you, six with any one of those abilities would be a strong card. I'd be like, oh yeah, you could you could play that for sure. But yeah. <laughs> there's three abilities that are just insane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it yeah. Just wow oh, on that I, one, right? Right. Like imagine imagine, you know, you're in a you're in a pod and this guy is drawn fifteen cards. Well, let's set him back to like a normal, respectable hand. And then let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit Dan's jet mirror, you know, or swing at Jan with his jet mirror deck so I can make him mill half his deck. And then I'm gonna reanimate it. I'm gonna reanimate all of it. That's what I'm doing with this deck. Well, the deck tech's coming for sure, but oh yeah. Well, and the other thing too is like I was instantly the moment I saw this again as we talked about one card ago. Man, I love Enter the Battlefield. Man, I love mm-hmm. it. And it, this has red. You can mirror march this card, and you can have like three of them die to legend rules. So you could you could literally like strip every one of half their cards, or you could do it to one person repeatedly, which would be really funny. And then have them ha- sack half their non land permanents, rounded down three times in a row. Hilarious. Like, and- it has blue. We can clone it. We can clone it and keep the clones if we really want to. It has black. We can clone. You can let this one you can, die. Yeah, I was going to say you can let this giant removal target go right to the grave and reanimate it. Like, there's anything I'm going to do with this deck, no one's going to like except for me. It's going to be my Negan deck all over again. And that's fine. I've I've grown. I have gotten tougher skin. <laughs> you've just learned, you've just learned that too bad, so sad. Lord Xander, the tear collector, is what it should be called. Man, it's got such good abilities. Yeah, I I was not disappointed with any of the Grixis stuff at all, and I was not disappointed with any of the Jun stuff at all. Like they the the stuff that they did with these two shards are just awesome, and I'm excited to talk about more of them. But yes, Lord Xander, the collector, I think is one of my favorite cards from this set already. Right. Um, who wants to take the nonsense artifact? I, I will take the nonsense artifact. Okay, please. <laughs> um, so, uh, Luxior Giada's Gift, uh, one for a legendary artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each counter on it, and equip permanent isn't a planeswalker and is a creature in addition to his other types. Loyalty abilities can still be activated, and it's got equip planeswalker one and equip three. Yeah, that's good. Nonsense. That's, that's really good. <laughs> It lets all of the planeswalkers that can be your commander. There's just a whole new level of what you can do to them now. Oh yeah, I <laughs> I just was so confused about this card. <laughs> it's, it's so much. Uh, another it thing is. too is that it would make uh, a nice thing is that for your planeswalkers that do die, loyalty counters would go on them, and loyalty counters aren't planeswalker specific. So like o- Ozolith will take the loyalty counters off, and you can move them on to the next planeswalker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. Yes, it's silly. Um, I want to take this next one because I think it's cool. It's I'm, meeting. A, um, I was going to say, I'm glad you do because I was going to trash it. So please. Okay. It's meeting of the five. It's three in Wooburg for a sorcery. You exile the top 10 cards of your library. You may cast spells with exactly three colors from among them this turn. Add double Wooburg and spit this man only to cast spells with exactly three colors. Um, this, this harkens back to the, um, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, from War of the Spark. Um, uh, they, uh, uh, Niv-Mizzet? Yeah. Uh, thank you. I'm having trouble with names today, guys. Sorry. But this makes me think of like niv I really like brewing in three colors. Even like my, even like my Kenrith reanimator deck still feels like a Esper deck more than it feels like a five color deck. So a card like this and a five color shell, when you have like the same kind of affinity, like I do for shards or wedges, just depending seems really hot. <laughs> like, and then you get the double mana to, to pop, you know, potentially cast your combo pieces or potentially cast like some of your big bombs. I think it's sweet. Yeah. That's, that's a better take than I had. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of makes sense. I was, I was going to say, I just didn't like this as a mythic, that it, I would be disappointed if I pulled it. That's fair. I could see where this could be a like bummer card in the mythic slot, but I can also see why it's in the mythic slot. Also, once again, art, insane. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is pretty cool for sure. 
there's uh, some of these demons are much bigger than the other ones. I'll tell you that. Yeah, for sure. Big old fat cat daddy. I love him. <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> uh, Sloth, do you want to take this one? Sure. Uh, so this next one is Ob Nixless the Adversary. Uh, one black red for a three loyalty planeswalker. Uh, it's got casualty X. The copy isn't legendary. It has starting loyalty X. So as you cast this spell, you may sacrifice a creature with power X. Uh, if you do copy the spell, the copy becomes a token. That's really the only way I can see this card being really any good, personally. Uh, plus one, each opponent loses two life. Unless they discard a card, if you control a demon or a devil, you gain two life. Minus two, create a 1-1 one, one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, deals one damage to any target. And a minus seven, uh, target player draws seven cards and loses seven life. Yeah. Um, if, you have the, if you're playing with that new angel, you <laughs> draw seven cards and... Mill seven cards. Mill fourteen. Oh yeah, fourteen yeah. is a double. Sick. Yeah. Seems good. It's uh. I I I, I don't know. I I like the ability to at three mana in Rakdos that each opponent loses two life unless they discard a card. I do like that. It's got some protection that when it dies it deals further damage to things. I I do like it, and it's minus seven is pretty solid. The fact mm-hmm. that you can copy it as well is pretty cool. I really like this card, honestly. Um, it's another card that I want to put in uh, my new um, Lord Xander deck. Yeah. Because it just, just being able, the, the Meg 7 is kind of where you want to get with this guy, right? But the protection that you get, like sometimes people just don't want to take that <laughs> take that damage. And I, I don't know, like having the ability to pump out a couple all right, well, having the ability to pump out a copy of this seems really cool. Well, and if you have a big creature, especially in a reanimator deck, for three mana, you get your normal Obnix list. You sack something that's a 7-7, seven, seven, and you alt it right off the bat. Mm-hmm. That's, that's solid. Seven life and commander is nothing. No. Nah. Yeah. Um, and it is, target, it is target player. That is something to think about, too. Yeah. Yeah, that is actually true. It'd be funny. It'd be a funny way to kill people. I love the alternate artworks of this card. That's what I was going to say, too. Like, all the alt arts for this set, I think, have been really on point. I, I do have to say, the uh, they have, like, a gilded foil version in this set. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's it's beautiful. Like, the it's what they should do for cards for now on. Like, it's it's the etch foiling times 10. It's beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, We've got the next leader of the, uh, I think this is Esper, yeah. So it's Rafine Scheming Seer, one white, one blue, one black, for a one-four Sphinx Demon flying with Ward 1. And I actually really like the Ward mechanic a lot. Uh, whenever you attack, target attacking creature connives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. And that uh, mechanic is you draw X cards, then discard X cards, and put a 1-1 counter on that creature for each non-land card discarded this way. So this actually like can become really, really big, really fast. And at its worst, it's... Uh, I-, I had built uh, Chromium, as like a madness deck in like red, white or uh, white, blue, black madness. There's a lot of really cool madness cards. So I I really thought that this was a good spot to maybe move that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Madness is fun. Um, Yeah. This kind of, when I saw this card too, I thought about honestly switching out my earth side deck because it's a, it's an Esper reanimator deck, but I'm not sure if I'm going to now or not. Um, I really like the mechanic and the looting effect is very nice. Um, he might end up in the 99. Yep. But I, I really do think this card is sick. Yeah. We also have Sanctuary Warden. Uh, it's four double white for a 5-5 five, five Angel Soldier. Again, tribes I love. Uh, flying with an ETB. Again, love it. Uh, it enters with two shield counters on it, which is awesome. Whenever it enters or attacks, you can remove a counter from a creature or planeswalker you control. If you do draw a card and create a 1-1 green-white citizen creature token, this is an awesome card to be able to flicker. Mm-hmm. It's it's double yep. indestructible from damage or destroy effects. It lets you, when it enters, remove one of those to draw a card, generates tokens. Like This is everything I like in a card. Yeah, this is another one that I saw that I thought would be really good in Karador Yamori. Um, just having that... the. The ability to draw a card on a creature like this that you can reanimate or flicker is actually, and also create a body with it is, is super, super good. Yeah, I'm going to let you guys just finish the rest of this mythic section off here. You guys can just go back and yeah. forth. All right. I really want to take Titan of Industry. I'm very excited about this card. Excellent. Um, it's four triple grain for a 7 7 elemental with Reek and Trample. When Titan of Industry enters the battlefield, 
choose to destroy target artifact or enchantment target player gains five life create a four four green rhino uh warrior creature <laughs> token or put a shield counter on a creature you control this card is yeah this card is nuts and it's alt art it looks like it reminds me of big o if you guys ever watched big o like just i love it um this isn't when i saw this card i was like this this has i have to get this has to go in character yumori the fact that it has so much utility on a creature with really good stats is just oh that's like a lot of this set we've already been talking about it's like if it was just one of these abilities it would be really good to begin with but to have multiple and you get to choose two and still get to keep the creature is just insane to me i saw yeah. so many people type that this card sucked and i was like a 7-7 seven, seven reach trample at 7 is an amazing card. With choose 2 as an ETB, it's not when you cast it. Yeah, that's it, it, regardless of that, the 7-7 the seven, seven reach trample is good stats. I'm like, that is solid 7 mana, and it's in green. That's nothing hard to hit. I was like, this is a good creature at that. Literally, then, they could have bumped it. Yeah, they could have bumped this down to rare, took away the choose 2, but kept reach trample 7-7 seven, seven, and an elemental. Yeah, well, still would have been. That's the other thing. It's elemental. It's a popular tribe. Even if this had, <laughs> when it enters, choose one, and you it had that utility, it would be phenomenal. But the choose two is crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many decks I have Panharmonicon in? A Ooh, lot. Yeah. This is this is oh nuts. When it enters, choose four. Yeah, that's great. Gain twenty life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this card. Yeah. <laughs> this goes so good in like a Yarok deck. This it's just such a good enter the battlefield ability. It is a very strong card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is I was gonna say, and its alt art is great. Big oh, yeah. Um, so this next one is one that I don't. Well, I know Dan and I don't like. Don't like it at all. Uh, Not even a little bit. Urbrask, correct. Heretic Praetor, uh, three double red for a four four legendary creature for Axiom Praetor with haste. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card to your library. You may play that this turn. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, the next time they would draw a card this turn, instead they exile the top card to their library and they may play it this turn. Compared to this kind of what we were talking about before, but compared to some of the other Praetors that we've gotten, this is garbage. Yeah, this sucks. It's like, I'm, I'm sure there's uses for it, but this sucks in comparison to... Look at any of the Praetors like, across the board, and this just mm. sucks. They don't lose their card at all. And you get like one extra draw. Like compare that to like Jinja Tax is the new one, where I copy the first instant sorcery or artifact each turn. Yeah, yeah. that's significantly better. Compare it to like my double counters, half counters, Vorinclex, the plus mm -hmm. two minus two Elish Norn effect. Like it's just, yeah. it's so weak in comparison to what the Predator should do. If it had at uh, just for every every card they draw, it exiles and they can play it this turn. And it kind of forced it, sure. But, like, it's inconvenience is that, like, they just, the first card they draw, they have to, it, it's nothing. I, I don't know. I was yeah. very let down by this card. Yeah. 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 Just, no. It, it feels very weird in comparison to the other Urbrask. With the other Urbrask, you know, giving your creatures haste and basically shutting down the rest of your opponent's creatures for a turn. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, like, and that, sure, sure, Urbresk was the weaker of the Praetors, like, in the, in the printing of abilities, but, like, still, like, the tap and untapped creatures was still a good ability. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it gave all of your creatures haste. This just, itself, it, it's just so weak in comparison, like I said, it just, like, Vorinclex is one mana more. Uh, again, this is five mana for a 4-4 four, four with haste compared to, like, Vorinclex, a 6-6. Six, six, like, let me... Let me pull up Vorinclex so I'm making sure that I'm right here. Just, just to compare, just so, I, just so I'm giving it a fair shake. Yeah, okay. So we've got Vorinclex at 6 mana for a 6-6 six, six Trample Haste. So it's already better just stats-wise in every way. And then if you put a counter on one or more, uh, one or more counters on a permanent or player, you double it and people lose half. Versus like, oh, they exile their first card and can play it for the turn. Like, it's so bad. And... And it only like it only triggers in their upkeep. It's not even the first card they draw each turn. Yeah, it's not even shutting down annoying Ristic study players. There's just <laughs> I don't know the application. I here. have feelings about it. I said from the get go that it was a junk mythic and that I'd be unhappy to pull it. I got it and I'm unhappy I pulled it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. 
We have another planeswalker. We have Vivian on the hunt. Four double green for a legendary creature, Vivian. Uh, it starts off with four loyalty counters. You can plus to it. You may sacrifice a creature. If you do, search your library for a creature card with mana value equal to one plus a sacrifice creature's mana value and put it on the battlefield and shuffle. Very good. Uh, plus one, mill five cards, then put any number of creature cards you mill this way into your hand. Also very good. And then Neg one, create a 4-4 four, four, uh, green rhino warrior creature token. I do not care about that one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not yeah. horrible to for a minus one, especially to protect yourself, it's pretty good. But we get birthing oh. pod. <laughs> yeah, you do yeah. you do get a plus two birthing pod and a like look for five creatures plus one. Yeah, it's very, very good. And it, like like Zach calls back to his character Yamori, that decks all creatures. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. for, for Zach's deck, this could be a plus one get five creatures. I would have to cut Yamori, sadly, so I could put Vivian in, and I'm not doing you that. You won't be a part of it? No, it's Kador Yamori for life. True. They're soulmates. My, um, my Jetmere is Jetmere and uh, the Orphan Cat. It's the, the first mm -hmm. actual one I've made a companion deck of. Oh, you'll come around to them. You'll start making more companion decks. They're great. Oh, I'll get there. <laughs> Lucy in every deck. Let's go. I wouldn't care. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You can have loot tree. Just let me let me use companions Companion as they were intended. Be, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. They really wrecked that mechanic. For commander jerks. Um, I want to take this next one, but I don't know how to pronounce its name correctly. Ziatora. Uh, yeah. So Ziatora, the incinerator, three black, red, green, Jund. You get a legendary creature, Demon Dragon, 6-6 six, six with flying. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another creature. All right, cool, cool. When you do Zeotora, the incinerator, deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target, and you create three treasure tokens. Yeah, that's I love good. This. That's real good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the fact that you can just, like, hurl 1-1 one, one tokens at creatures and still get three treasure tokens, already good. I, like... I'm just gonna make a reanimator deck. That's all we're gonna. We know what we know what I'm doing. <laughs> Zach, <laughs> Zach's not shaking up his meta right now. I mean, I'm shaking it up. It's just a matter of like how I'm shaking it up. Like, oh, now you're doing reanimator and John again. It's a, it's yeah. a. It's again good stats. Six six flyer. Like I, I like that card a lot. I think there's. Uh, someone was saying to me during the spoiler season. They're just like these can all just kind of be interchanged, which is what I don't like about the typical Jund sacrifice dragon. And I was like, eh, I think this one's interesting at least. Yeah, see how I would like to do it. And there are a couple other cards that, um, especially because of what they gave John for this set, there are a couple other cards that really lean into the artifact um, aristocrat package that I've started, you know, getting into with Mike and Will and a couple other cards I've been looking at. And that kind of leads into this because we get, you know, um, cards that care about artifacts being destroyed or sacrificing artifacts or when an artifact leaves the battlefield. So we can literally just play our game like we want, you know, play a creature, sacrifice it, deal damage to something, get tokens, use our tokens to do literally whatever and deal more damage to someone. So while I, while I get, like, yes, this fits in that same kind of niche of, like, you know, the typical artifact dragon stuff, it still feels unique enough to me anyways that I'm excited about it. I like it. I think it's really cool, and I really like its alt art. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to skip the next card. It's not even worth talking about. Avon Heart Stabber exists. Go look it up if you want. It sucks. We're going to go to Black Market Tycoon, though. Black Market <laughs> Tycoon is great. Again, another cat in a, eh, cat in a dress suit. <laughs> he's, he's a business cat. Uh, Black Market Tycoon, one red, one green. For a 2-2 two -two cat rogue, at the beginning of your upkeep, Black Market Tycoon deals two damage to you for each treasure you control and has tapped to create a treasure token. Number one, this is an awesome ability, and I love it. Number two, this further shows me that I need to just continue to advocate for people to play Tamanoa as a deck because this is exactly the kind of stuff that Tamanoa wants. Mm -hmm. But short of Tamanoa and my illegal commander decks, this one's awesome. I love this card. I want to give. I want someone, you know, give someone a bunch of treasure tokens, and then I want a harmless offering this guy to someone. Yeah, just just have fun. I think it's good. I wanted to take the next one too because it's the one banned card I did, thought didn't suck. And again, that might change in thirty seconds. But it's <laughs> Broker's Ascendancy, and I also, by the way, I didn't even like the alt art of this. I thought it looked terrible. Ah, uh, you are alone on that one, sir. You like yeah, that? I really like this alt art. Well, apparently, I'm wrong. Uh, two to one. 
But brokers ascendancy, it's banned, <laughs> just banned for an enchantment. Beginning of your end step, put a one on counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. That is unquestionably a good ability for three. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Someone, someone could take the next one. That's <laughs> that's how much uh, I disliked Bant. That was what I thought was the that was my opinion on the good Bant card. Uh, so this next one is um, Cabaret Ascendancy. It is red, green, white for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it's creature or planeswalker card, you may reveal it, put it into your hand. If you don't put the card into your hand, you may put it on the bottom of your library. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. All right, I'm taking this one. You guys already know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have Cemetery Tambourine, two and a black with Hideaway 5. Um, when this enchantment enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library, exile one of them face down, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Then it says at the beginning of your upkeep, you may mill three cards. Then if there are 20, more, 20 or more cards in your graveyard, you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. Yeah. Seems fine. Yeah. Yeah, for Zach, that's just a play. Play it for free card. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we that's have, all. We have Corp Explosion, <laughs> one, <laughs> one colorless, one black, one red. As an additional cost to cast it, exile creature from your graveyard, Zach would never. And it deals mm -hmm. combat damage. Er, Corpse Explosion deals damage equal to the Exile's power to each creature and Planeswalker. Well, maybe. Maybe, um, maybe he would. If I'm, if I'm playing Brash Tauner, which if I'm in red, I'm playing Brash Tauner, this is actually really good. True. You could just get rid of Draco. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, gross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's thick. That's too thick. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I love the casualty mechanic, like I said, so I wanted to take this one because it does things I like, things Zach likes, but things I like too. Uh, it's Cut of the Prophets. <laughs> X double black for a sorcery with casualty three. As you cast it, you can sack a creature with power three or less when you do copy it. You draw X cards and you lose X life. Three or greater, sir. Three or greater, sorry. Three or greater. Three or greater. You can't, yeah, you can't just sack a one one. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that would be insane. Oh my goodness, that'd be insane. Yeah. Um, this card is still insane. I really like it. Mm. There's a, put more. A, a spoiler to later on in this long episode. The, one of the new commanders gives you the ability to, whenever you copy something, you may have target opponent copy it. And I love all of these things that are like you draw and lose X life because I want to drain them along with me. That's awesome. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking, uh, I say this next one. yeah. Speaking of annoying things to copy, please. Um, this next one is uh, cut your losses for double blue for a sorcery with casualty two. Uh, target player mills half your library rounded down. Yuck. This is in, this is going to brew back. It's just it's traumatized. It's, it's traumatized yeah. in a strict upgrade. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah, it's just good. <laughs> and and you mean to tell me I get to sacrifice a creature? Okay, yeah. it's oh. I'm looking. It's, okay, so it's one mana less than traumatized, and you can you can hit two people with it. It's still a strictly better upgrade. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you gotta sacrifice that creature. Oh no. Uh, I really like the next one too. I think this is a very cool board wipe. Uh, I really like that they keep putting these in. It's depopulate. Two double white. Each cre uh, each player who controls a multicolored creature draws a card. Then you destroy all creatures. Just very, very simple. Destroy for four mana. What I like to see in a board wipe. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that, and that hits you too. Yeah. You know, you get to, I mean, the drawing card, you know. Yeah, I want to take this in. really quickly. I just love the flavor text on it. That's why I like this card so much. It's no screams rang out, no blood stay in the streets. In an instant, the bustling metropolis instantly or simply fell silent. I love it. Mm -hmm. Depopulation, please. Uh, I want to take this next one because I think it's really cool. It's de it's devilish valet. It's two and a red for a devil warrior one three with trample and haze, and it has alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, double devilish valet's power until end of turn. That. In like a Krenko deck, especially like that's nuts. Mm -hmm. Ten things enter, so it doubles once, then twice, then three times. Then oof. I like. I want to. I want to put this in so many decks. <laughs> so many decks because it's so silly. He just looks so annoyed about having to take people's stuff, and he's like, "Well, if I'm going to take it, I'm going to use it." Yeah. Sloth, you want this one? Yeah, sure. So this next one is uh, Endless Detour. It is green, white, blue for an instant. Uh, the owner of target spell, non-land permanent, or card in a graveyard puts it on top or bottom of their library. <laughs> it, it, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's such a high cost. Like, it's, 
such a color specific cost for a card that could have been good. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's sweet. Oh, it's, it makes me happy. It's good. It's it's funny. It's good, but I don't know. This is another flavor text that seems really silly. After after driving around the eleventh construct barrier, the taxi driver began to suspect she was being herded into a trap. <laughs> I don't know why that just makes me laugh. That's fair. I do like the next one a lot. I think this is a really cool card to build around. But it's really, really cool in a lot of decks that I like to play with copy stuff because I just love copying spells. Uh, it's Errant Street Artist. It's one blue for a 0-3 human rogue legendary creature. It has Flash, Defender, and Haste. And then it has one and a blue and a tap. Copy target spell you control that wasn't cast. You may choose new targets for the copy. I think it's got like a really, really cool ability. I wish it was any spell you cast so you can copy your copies with her. Yeah. I don't know, this card's sweet, and I love the fact, too, that she's, like, a graffiti artist. Yeah. I just, I think it's a pretty cool one. Mm-hmm. Zach, did you want this? Sure. Uh, we have Evelyn, the, I don't know, Covetous. There we go. It's two hybrid Demir Black hybrid Rakdos. Uh, so you can pay the blue or black or the red or black, depending on how you're casting this. Um, it's a legend. Yeah, you could just triple black. Um, legendary creature vampire rogue two five with flash when Evelyn or another vampire enters a battlefield under your control exile the top card of each player each player's library with a collection counter on it once each turn you may play a card from exile with a collection counter on it as if it I'm sorry if it was exiled by an ability you controlled and you may spend mana as though were mana of any color to cast it this card's actually really really cool I really like it it's a very very cool take on a vampire travel deck Mm -hmm. right and if i'm if i'm reading this correctly that means any anything so like if i was to exile it with another another ability or another thing right i'd still be able to do it Only or am once I each turn you can play a card from exile with a collection counter on it if it was exiled by an ability um, to control okay so it still has to have the collection counter on it okay but, but i can make oh, copies oh, so yeah so specifically specifically it's so that if evelyn goes away it's not a new instance so it's not things exiled with evelyn it's things with collection counters. On. Okay. So you that's cool. you never lose the ability to play their cards. And I think that's really, really solid. Again, mm -hmm. my favorite kind of stuff, ETB, Panharmonic on this bad boy. And every time a vampire enters, they lose two cards from the top of their library that I can play whenever I want. Love it. It, yeah, also, vampires. it also, I do have to say, is once each turn, not once your turn. So it does give you access to people's like instance and sort like instance out on other turns. Well, and we're also in the colors that if we want to make multiple copies oh, yeah. of Evelyn, we can we can very easily do that and be able to keep the copies as well. Oh, yeah, so many good abilities that can give you that. Mm -hmm. I, I just think yeah. it's such an interesting take on a, like, vampire. Because, like, traditionally we've got, like, our bloodthirsty vampires, right? But, like, this mm -hmm. is more of, like, the rich, like, rich immortal, like, I've got my treasure hoard vampire kind of thing that we see in, like, stories. And I just, I really like this card. I think it's one that I want to build and maybe change one of my vampire decks over into. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, I've got, because I, I have like, um, Streffen was like, for instance, that was one of the pre-cons from Midnight Hunt. And it's a pretty solid vampire deck out of the box. However, adding the blue, adding the ability to get it out with just mono black. I just, I really like it. This, all, by the way, as well, you could build as a mono black vampire, mono black uh, vampires are a great tribe already and this would like you can just play people's I, I just i really like the card and what it lets you do yeah there's just so much cool stuff and it being a rare i think is like also awesome because it makes it easier to open yeah i'm pretty sure i got one of these I, i'll have to look but if i did i'll build it if i didn't i'll buy it and then i'll build it um sloth you want to take this one yeah this next one is uh, Evolving Door, two and a green for an artifact, one and tap it to sacrifice a creature. Uh, count the colors of the sacrificed creature, then search library for a creature card that's exactly that many colors plus one. Exile that card, then shuffle. You may cast the exiled card and activate only as a sorcery. It's a weird card. Yeah. I... Very flavorful, though. Yeah, I don't yeah, know how it's... I feel about it. It's very weird. You know? I feel like it could be fun. Uh, the next one, Extraction Specialist. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> extraction Specialist is two and a white for a 3-2 human rogue with lifelink. When it enters, return target creature with mana value two or less from the uh, from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
That creature can't attack or block for as long as you control Extraction Specialist. It's it's a weird bring back card for sure. Mm-hmm. But mm. I'm gonna talk about Fighter again, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's two and a green for another hideaway five. Uh, it's an enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then if you control a creature with power seven or greater, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. I think this is a super flavorful card that's like, I'm not a huge fan of the hideaway cards, but I think this card is very cool in how it works. Yeah. Well, I think green, especially like dropping it down late game, you might already just have a creature with power seven or greater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. Speaking of things I like, this next one I don't. It's Fleetwood Dancer. <laughs> it's a 4-4. Four, four. It's one red, green, white. It has trample, lifelink, haste. That's it. It's a druid. Elf druid. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's a three cost and 4-4. Four, four. Uh, I feel like this is like, what was it? Uh, uh, Manus Rider? Yeah. It's, yeah it was, maybe it's great in other formats. I just don't play other formats, so... Too yeah, bad. I do like oh. Gala Greeters. I'm going to take that one too. And I do like how many ridiculously different versions of the cards there are. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There's a lot. So good luck figuring out which one. I don't know if it was just like the, if it was regional uh, set boosters, like the regional buy a box promo. I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, yeah, but there are th- one's there Russian, are 13... one's Chinese, one's Japanese. There's, there yeah. seems like a lot. There are 13. Yeah. Gala B. Gruber is probably German. If anyone's German and that's offensive, I'm sorry. But I don't speak German, so that's how I'm pronouncing it. Uh, uh, I German, yeah. Gala Greeters. One and a green for a 1-1 elf druid. Great tribes. Has alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. So a great restriction on it. But you can put a 1-1 counter on Gala Greeters, create a tap treasure token, or gain two life. That's awesome on other creatures entering the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. really like that card. I think it's got great utility. I think it was a really cool buy a box. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to take this next card because I think it's cool. <clears throat> we have Getaway Car. It's three for a 4-3 vehicle with haste. It crews for one. Whenever Getaway Car attacks or blocks, or return up to one target creature that crewed it to its owner's hand this turn. Cool. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have a creature that has an ETB that you're not have like you don't have a way to like reuse, you could easily just crew it with getaway car. And I mean, a crew one for for four, or you know what I mean for four damage for, seems pretty good. I, there are I, a lot of I, I like it. I yeah. think it's like got such a yeah. cool ability. The mm-hmm. them making more of the vehicle things, I think, are pretty cool. Those yeah, are- I'm a big fan of vehicles as well. I think they're a very unique like way to get around things is there's so many creatures that i really like that i just end up leaving on the battlefield that don't do anything mm-hmm. so having an artifact to protect them basically to allow them to swing or at least get damaged here seems has always been cool for me yeah i yeah. really want to talk the next one because it's such again i i if i had a i like the angel tribe jar and i had to put a dollar in it every time i say it i'd be broke at the end of this episode um this is giada font of hope it is one and a white for a legendary creature, Angel 2-2. Two, two. It has flying and vigilance, which are great stats and a great low-cost angel. First off, having any angel in the command zone, especially in a mono-white deck, is you're, you're asking for pain because you're not getting it out anytime soon. Mm-hmm. This has each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it for each angel you already control. That is a crazy ability. First off, yeah. that is insane. And then it has tap to add one mana, spend it only to cast angel spells. So you're ramping your angels out in mono white, and you're making just the thickest angels you can imagine. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's insane. Like, I they, I feel like for the story and for like how this set was designed, they had to make a super powerful angel. The fact that this isn't mythic still blows my mind because it's super super powerful. Yeah, I, I really think like um again. Like a broken parrot, I'm saying it. I've been taking decks apart. And one of the ones I took apart was my old, uh, I had a Gisela Blade of Gold Knight Angel deck. And it just didn't, it couldn't just keep up with what the current meta of things were. It was just kind of slow and clunky. And, and But I've got just a ton, like a, a just a huge stack of like white angels that have come out of a deck and are just like sitting in a pile now. And this is like the perfect spot for them. And again, like sure, my mono white, all angel tribal deck is probably not going to be the most competitive deck, but it's going to be fun. 
and I'm going to have a great time making huge, huge 1-1 counter angels. Oh, for sure. Oh, that's, and again, it's an ETB ability, and I love ETB abilities. <laughs> I want to pan harmonic on the world with this. And I also just think the artwork's beautiful. I think both versions of the card look great, and Angel at two mana is super cool. I love it. I'm in love with the card. Yeah. And, um, and if you can help with the host this, whoo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fairly easy to do. Yeah, all right. Um, I'm done ranting. I really like this next card, too, uh, so I kind of want to take it. It's a horde hauler. It's three and a red for a five five vehicle. It has trample. It crews for three. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token for each artifact they control. This card can be a sleeper and do absurd things. This can extend your turn so far, depending on like how your meta looks or the people you're playing against. So it just needs to do one point of damage to be able to get all those treasure tokens. I think, let's be honest, every meta has someone running that smothering tithes nonsense. And how mm -hmm. easy you can make something like this unblockable or, you know, rogues passage this and they have 30 treasure tokens. We have 30 treasure tokens. Are they going to yeah. sack them all so you don't get them? That also works just fine for me. Yeah. So, oh, I'm in combat. All right. Uh, I'll sacrifice all my treasure tokens. Okay, cool. Uh, move out of combat. Aww. Yeah, you lose your mana. <laughs> a 5-5 a five, five trample at, three, at four mana, also great. Uh, I love that, again, we're talking about vehicles. I like that they evade board wipes so well. Yeah. They, like, mm -hmm. they give a unique, like, a unique take on deck building when you're playing vehicles because you, you don't have to worry as much about normal removal. It, it's not your creature removal kind of thing. In my creature yeah. decks, in my creature heavy decks where I can slot it in, I've been putting um, in the three drop spot the Cultivator. Um, Caravan, yeah, I love that one. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a good mana rock, but it's also just a vehicle. Yeah, it can do something later on. It's it's good follow-up when your board inevitably gets wiped, because I play a lot of creature-heavy decks. Yeah, speaking of interesting board wipes, I like this one a lot, but it's like its alternate art is just beautiful. It's incomparably good compared to the other one. This is Hostile Takeover, and anyone who's pulled the alternate art, again, if you had a Gilded Foil of this, oof. Uh, Hostile Takeover is two... One blue, one black, one red for sorcery. Up to one target creature has base power and toughness 1-1 one, one until the end of the turn. Up to one target creature has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four until the end of turn. Then it deals three damage to each creature. That's just an awesome way to clear the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can save whatever your favorite thing is. You can kill whatever the biggest problem is. And then it sweeps the board for three, which for token decks is nuts. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's a really interesting way to clear the board, but it's very cool. I was uh, speaking, by the way, I just have to talk about like an interaction. I was on, I, I'm occasionally on Reddit for magic things. And I saw someone, um, they were like talking with and like to the podcast page a few times. And I saw a post from them. So if you are the person doing that and you know the situation, um, this is just a specific thing. It's just reminding me of people can't equip your creatures. They, uh, they were talking in a thing about how they didn't know how to get around someone skull clamping their elves. They, they can't skull clamp your elves. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. I, I know this is a very specific aside to one listener, but they can't skull clamp your elves. You stop letting your friends cheat you. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what. So that's what someone was doing is every before his elves could do any like anything or have haste, they would like they would say they were gonna skull clamp his Marwin. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and then it was dying, and then they were drawing on the dying. That definitely isn't how it works. I wish it did. Skull clamp would be a forty dollar card at that price. Mm -hmm. Oh, more than that. Skull Clamp's already a $10 card when, when it's used the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just thought it was really good. Then we go to another sweeper, which I'll just take as well. Incandescent yeah. Aria, it is just Naya for sorcery, three damage to each non-token creature. I think that's kind of a cool way to clear the board of other things. And yeah, we will move on. <laughs> okay. Um, Zach, you take this one. I'll take the next one, and then and then I'll I'll let Slothy go because I know he wants that one. Yeah, I was just about uh, to ask. <laughs> so we're on Jaxus, the Troublemaker. Yeah, three and a red for a two three legendary creature, human warrior. You can pay one and tap it. You discard a card. I like that. You create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control. I like that. It gains haste, and when this creature dies, draw a card. I like that. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Activate only as a sorcery. I like this card. Yeah, I thought you'd like this card. <laughs> and and from the command zone, you can also, it has Blitz. Blitz, yep. Um, for one and a red. 
If you cast a spell for its bliss cost, it gains hates, and when this creature dies, draw a card, sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. Yeah, um, I saw Jax's and I was like, man, I really, I just really like this card. And it tore me up because, like, I have a red deck I've kind of been tinkering with, with, like, my collection, and it's Felden, right? Yep. I think I like Jax's better because it doesn't lock me into, well, I guess Felden doesn't really lock you into artifacts, but... But this is more creature based. It, it does everything you want because all mm -hmm. of the dies triggers that you want to go off, this just gives them dies. You don't have to look for a sack outlet. Nope. It's a, it lets you do a lot of really cool things, and there are a lot of really cool ETB and LTB creatures out there. So I don't know. Jax is sweet. And the art is just cool. I don't know what's going on. I don't know this creature's backstory, but I want to know this creature's backstory because they look super tough. Yeah, I, I definitely yeah. like this card. I think it's very cool. Um, the next we have Jetmere's Garden. We have a return to the Triumphs, which is awesome. I do like that they also stapled the cycling on it. I, th I would have thought they were significantly worse without it. Mm -hmm. uh, it enters tapped, and this is the Naya one. It's a mountain forest plane. I love the Triumphs. I don't even need to rant about them. Everyone gets it. They're amazing. Yeah. My yeah. only question, if this is for Jetmere, where's, like, the catnip? Where's, like, the scratching post or, like, the cat tree? Jetmere's garden. I just love him. I think I think in the first one, that's him sitting on a couch there. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, no, I didn't. Hear. Uh, you cut out. What'd you say? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was saying I think in the first one, uh, the first artwork, that's just him sitting on a couch, big fat cat demon on a couch. Yeah, in the background there. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I can see that. Well, it. so I mean, I probably couldn't do better artwork than this, but I still think it's missing a scratching post. You could give me a million dollars in a year. And I couldn't come up with better artwork than the text box. <laughs> <laughs> it would never work. Speaking of Jetmere, though, please, Slothy. Yes. So this is the commander I'm building from this set. Uh, Ginny Faye, Jetmere second. It's a uh, hybrid gruel, a green, and hybrid Selesnia. So three mana total for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature elf druid. If you would create one or more tokens, you may instead create that many 2-2 two, two green cat creature tokens with haste. Or that many three one green dog creature tokens with haste or with vigilance. Sorry, I love this card. It's, it's so yeah. silly. Yeah, this card is fun. The artwork just strolling through cat in one hand, big old German shepherd looking dog in the other hand. What a great looking card. Mm -hmm. I, I think I it's really really cool. Yeah, it's well, and and creating two two cats with haste and then three one dogs with vigilance is very strong. Yeah, because like you could do. Token themes is just like a whole bunch of one-one soldiers. Well, you look mean? at uh, what is the? I can't even think of the name of it right now. I'm tired. It's uh, Verdant Force, one mm -hmm. like a one-one Sapperlin every turn, turns into a two-two dog every or three-one dog or two-two cat every turn. I just think I think Ginny Face is a really cool card. Tender shoot dryad. Yep. Ooh, yeah. Gross. Yeah. And I do like the ability that uh, you you can choose. So if you want mm -hmm. the other creatures, you can do that. Like I just I think that this card's got a lot of really really cool utility in it. Yeah, I think it'll hit the board really quick. Um, what I really like as well about these uh, hybrid commanders is I think they're really really like enabling for like a more budget player as well too, right? Like the, the ceiling for them is really high, but the floor is also great. Like the ability to okay, I don't really have dual lands, but I can get this out with three forests. Yeah. Right? I just, I really, really like that. You're you're very <laughs> unlikely to lose your, like, uh, lose your commander early to, like, uh, mana problems. And, uh, again, a 3-3 three, three at 3, like, this commander comes down early in the game. I just, I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does a lot of things. The I really like how they did the mana restriction as well, if you want to call it. I guess the it's not a mana restriction, but you know what I mean? They got around the mana restriction so that, like, you can just play the game. So if you only open green mana, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I really, really liked the design of these. I thought it was really, really well done. Yeah, absolutely. The next we have is Ledger Shredder. It's one and a blue for a bird advisor, one, three flyer. Whenever, uh, whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, Ledger Shredder connives, draw a card, then discard a card. My big problem with that mechanic is that it forces me to draw and discard. I really like Ledger Shredder. I know, I know you like to discard and throw things out and bring things back. It's just mm -hmm. not, it's not for me. I like the cards in my hand. I'm greedy. Um, I want to hold them. Well, here's, here's some tech for you. If you really don't like it, you always run library lane. True. Just, you know, yeah. I'm sure you knew that, but yeah. Yeah, but I forgot. 
Then we also have Maestro's Ascendancy. It's one blue, one black, one red. Once during each of your turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery from your graveyard by sacking the creature in addition to paying its other costs. If a spell cast this way, it would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. So you get an enchantment that's like based around Kes's ability, and I think that's super cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also lets you um, increasing ambition is a good example of like you can cast it from its graveyard, and if it's cast from a graveyard, you can do blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can tutor for two, but you can cast for just its cost. I really, really like that ability with like cast the same with like an ignite the future kind of thing you can cast the normal cost from the grave i just like it i just like it a lot casting from yeah. graveyard is a very cool mechanic i would agree with that 100 percent. yeah it's been, zach loves the grave obviously uh, i live in it <laughs> true um, <laughs> do you want to take this next one the i really don't like the all sort of this card i didn't even see it until now and i uh, yeah. Really? I think this alt art's sick. Yeah, uh, I, I, re- I really like this one too. Ah, uh, Slotty, I'm glad you're on board with me. That means we're right and Dan's wrong. That's, I, I'm, uh, I'm often wrong, but. It's Maestro's, what's his, Diabolus? Yeah. How do you say that? Uh, it's one blue, I'm sorry, it's blue, black, red for a 1 4 vampire warrior with death touch and haste. It bothers me this isn't legendary because I want it to be legendary. Whenever Maestro's Diabolus attacks, if you don't control a devil token, create a tapped and attacking 1-1 one, one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. I think this card's really cool. Like I said, I just wish it had legendary because I would play this as a commander. There are so many really good creatures in this deck that I might just rule zero and make legendary. Or not deck, sorry. And the set that I kind of just want to make legendary. To be honest, reading its flavor text and looking at its original artwork, like, read that flavor text out loud. Where did I find my horned friend? Now, that's a story worth telling. I'm I'm in love with that. I would love to see that as a legendary creature deck where it's... Because, again, you, wanna, you want your dice triggers. You've got a constant mm-hmm. creature, like, coming back kind of like in a squee-esque kind of fashion. I, I would like to see a deck built around Maestro's Diabolist. Well, might rule zero that, Dan, and we'll have an episode on it. I'm fine with that. Does someone want to take this uh, vehicle? Ah, uh, sure. So this next one is a Mysterious Limousine, three double white for an artifact vehicle. It is a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, whenever Mysterious Limousine enters the battlefield or attacks, exile up to one other target creature until Mysterious Limousine leaves the battlefield. If a creature is put into exile this way, return each other card exiled with Mysterious Limousine to the battlefield under its owner's control, and it's got uh, crew two. I think they did such a good job with all these vehicles. I love yeah. every vehicle. There's a ton of flavor with a lot of these. Mm-hmm. This um, one, the next one, I think is really, really cool for Spirit Tribal, especially expanding it to another color. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got the Obscura Ascendancy. One white, one blue, one black. Whenever you cast a spell, if its mana value is equal to one plus the number of soul counters on it, put a soul counter on Obscura Ascendancy, then create a 2-2 two, two white spirit creature token with flying. So it's got token creation, and as long as there's five or more soul counters on it, spirits you control get 3-3. That's a huge boost. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Dan, let me take the next two. Yeah, please. All right. So this card is Obscura and, uh, what's that? Interceptor. One white, blue, black for a Cephalid wizard. That's a 3-1 with flash and lifelink. Cephalid. That's so cool. I'm mm-hmm. so excited that they brought that creature type back. Mm-hmm. When Obscure Interceptor enters the battlefield, it connives. When it connives this way, return up to one target spell to its owner's hand. Um, this this card is sick. Cool. And it has yeah. flash and lifelink, if I didn't say that, because I was so excited to say it was a Cephalid. Um <laughs> This is another creature I want to make legendary and build a, a deck around because it's sick. Yeah. Why did Why did you do this, Wizards? Why couldn't these creatures be named? <laughs> like, I think we've got uh, to do the episode at some point soon about like the illegal commanders and like things that you should just run and rule zero interactions. Like again, Hans and Safi and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, um, yeah, please so that card's sick, but the next one's even more sick. If I pronounce its name wrong, you guys just have to deal with it. It's, what, Ognis, the Dragon's Lash? One hybrid Rakdos, red hybrid Gruul. It's a legendary creature, Vashina Warrior 3-3, another callback to an old tribe. It has haste, and whenever a creature you control with haste attacks, create a tapped treasure token. I love, all of this. love it. Yeah. I love this card. The alt art is so silly. This is such a cool card. It's a, like, we've never had a, well, I guess we've had some haste matters 
commanders, but none like this to this extent. And it pumps out treasure tokens. I still, I, I've been obsessed with treasure tokens lately. As you guys know, like I've talked about it a lot. This is another deck that I would love to build because like the, just the ability to use treasure tokens as a means to kill people is always really funny in my opinion, but also like there are so many cards that like have haste that create treasure tokens. So you just automatically get to double up on your things. So I've, I've mm -hmm. talked ad nauseum at this point about again, how much I like these hybrid ones and the fact that you can run them as their mono color, but you can run this as a mono red deck with nothing but mountains in it and still cast multicolored spells because of how easily you're going to be able to make other colored mana with those treasure tokens. I think that this yeah. is such a cool card. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I think they knocked it out of the park with these hybrid commanders. I, I think that there's some of the best designed creatures I've seen in a while. I would, abs I would absolutely love to see a return to how they did the, um, how they did the coloring for these cards. Like, if we could see this moving forward in sets, Wizards, I, like, I don't know if you listen or care to listen, but this is just so cool to me. It helps, it helps people on a budget, too. Like, maybe you don't have access to the best lands, but you have access to, like, at least some decent lands, you know? So you're, you can still play this on curve if you don't have the fetches or the duels, mm -hmm. you know, like... That's something that I got really excited about, too, because I don't always want to, you know, have to proxy every single land so I can be at a consistent pace with my friends. Yeah, well, and like, again, with not going out as much over the last year, like everything was shut down. You couldn't really, right? I, I just mm -hmm. had to. And again, this sounds silly to say I had to build with what was in my collection. But at a certain point, I ran out of those like. I ran out of my duels and shocks and I had to start building more budget themed decks and it really forced me to like reevaluate how I play magic and like what I like. And and Ooh. one of the things like sure, you can like you can pack duels into this and you could make it like great, but you could also just make a very fun budget deck to sit down and play with your friends, especially like newer players getting into it. I just I I love the I love the on ramp that these are to three color decks as well, like I just I love it. So good. Yeah, I'm. I'm also very much like I. I I'm just yes. Good job. Uh, yeah, can't uh, can't say it enough. These are like again. This is, these are my favorite cards in the set. <laughs> every guys, I think we've determined every card is Dan's favorite card in the set. Uh, at some point, I'm getting to another another special listener's favorite card, and you know what it is. Yes. Um, so we've got Park Heights Pegasus is the next one. One green, one white. For a 2-1 Flying Trample, when it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card if you had two or more creatures enter the battlefield under control this turn. Meh. Meh. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. It's Like, they're, they're trying so hard to give white card draw. They're doing everything but giving it card draw. Yeah. yeah. Just, just print the card. Um, and then I wanted to talk about the next one because I thought it was pretty cool. And it's something that I think should, especially with how it looks like design-wise, should be legendary, should be partnered with Jaxus, which would be cool. Uh, it's Professional Face Breaker. Two and a red for a 2-3 with Menace. Whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token, sack a treasure token, exile the top card of your library, you can play it this turn. Again, another card that would have been a very cool commander. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to be talking... We're going to have to do a, a segment called Rule Zero, and I just go through decks that I've built that are non-legendary creatures as legendary creatures. That's I, I've been making a list because, again, like I've been very... I've been very upfront with the fact that I like I play Tamanoa and I have a Lutri deck and like illegal commanders will be an episode we do for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've I've pinned those three for it. Um, Zach, you you've taken all the hideaway ones, please just Yeah. Uh we have Rabble Rousing, four and a white for an enchantment with hideaway five. Whenever you attack with one or more citizens, create that many <laughs> sorry, one one. <laughs> One one, uh, I said citizens. Sorry. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures, create that many one one green and white citizen creature tokens. Then, if you control ten or more creatures, you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. I just got excited because I like they're rabble rousing. They're like marching in the streets, just causing a mayhem. Yeah. What a silly card, by the way. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures, create that many one one. Like that's that's bonkers token creation. It's it's what I'm about. Yeah. I, I think it's very silly, and the art is awesome. Good job. Yeah. I did, as much as I complained about the boxes, I pulled a lot of Triumphs, and the next Triumph we've got is Rafine's Tower. It's a plain mm -hmm. island swamp, which, again, great. With cycling, it enters tapped as all of them, but, like, I love all of the artworks on all of them. 
Mm -hmm. the very yeah, beautiful. there's. Yeah. I'm gonna lose my mind trying to match these lands because, like, I love all of them. So each deck is gonna have their own. I have a bone like to pick player. with the next card. I'd like Zach to take it and then explain why it should have been black. <laughs> we have Reservoir Kraken. Well, in the name alone, but it's two double blue for a 6-6 six, six Kraken with Trample and Ward 2. And then at the beginning of each combat, if Reservoir Kraken is untapped, any opponent may tap an untapped creature they control. If they do, tap Reservoir Kraken and create a 1-1 one, one blue fish creature token with this creature can't be blocked. Um, because it's like every other black card that does the same thing. Like, um, what's the, what's the guy from, um, Throne? I don't, I don't know. One of the, one of the demons that does that. I don't know. It's just a black, that's a black ability. Yeah. It's a black ability. You, you have to tap it, you know, you have to tap it down. Otherwise you're about to get smacked. The, the next it's, one is wizards. Yeah. Just proving me wrong. Proving me wrong that even I can hate a cycle. I love <laughs> Uh, it's Rego Streetwise Mentor. It's the <laughs> Bant version of it again, and I just I got nothing positive about the Bants. Uh, it's a hybrid Selesnia, uh, white, a hybrid Azorius. It's a cat citizen, 2-2. Two, two. It enters with a shield counter on it, sure. Whenever you attack a player with or planeswalker with one or more creatures with power, one or less, draw a card. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> but there, there is a massive bonus to this card. And there's a cat in a suit. It is a cat in a suit. <laughs> cat in his business It's a cat dress. citizen. I don't know. I just compared to how much like I've been hyped about the other ones that are like this. I'm just yeah. like meh. Yeah, if you put this next to like Ginny Fay. Yeah, exactly. Like, Whenever you attack garbage. a player or player or planeswalker with one or more creatures with power, one or less, draw a card. It's it's just like so. They, you know, I can get like three max card draw a turn with it if I'm playing like aggro bant. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Aggro bant with what? Like, if you're going to play it, like, at least you'd be doing like the like the one card I said was passable for bant was like the broker's ascendancy where everything gets tokens. And then they're just like, no, it has to have power one or less or it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's bad. I think they did a bad job with the bant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, um, again, if you like the Bant, I'm often wrong. It's not, in my opinion doesn't matter at all, but I just think it's trash. I think it's garbage. Yeah. yeah. Um, this next one is uh, Riveteer's Ascendancy, uh, black, red, green for an enchantment. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, you may return to a creature card with lesser mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And do this only once each turn. Oof. <laughs> Zach? Zach. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you, this card is sick. It's so good. Um, yeah, I, it's, you just read it, and that's why it's good. I actually haven't read that one <laughs> at all. That's, mm -hmm. that's really good. And it's, um, I, I don't know who took the photo, but there's this is paying homage to a photo, of, it was a black and white photo of uh, gentlemen who were building a tower that were doing the exact same thing, like eating their lunch suspended the beam, over yeah. the city. Yeah, I, I thought that was so cool. I love when you know, life or art imitates life. <laughs> Osha go burr. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that uh, John Hebbets. Okay. There you go. Good, f good for that guy and his family. Yeah, it was uh, uh, next one. One second. This like just pairs so well with that Zeatora card mm -hmm. with the built-in sacrifice and reanimate. It's. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Zach will be making another Zeatora deck, dude. So I'm making so many of the same colored decks. I'm gonna try to make them all the same, but I can't. I know I can't. True. Like, cause there's a there's. A uh, Grixis card that I want to build a deck around too that we'll talk about. Um, but next we have Sanguine Spy. It's two and a black for a two three vampire rogue with uh, menace and lifelink. You can pay one and sack another creature. You look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. We know I like that. Mm -hmm. Then at the beginning of your end step, if there are five or uh, five or more mana values among cards in your graveyard, you may pay two life. If you do, draw a card. You've got draw, you have menace, you have lifelink, so you replenish the life you're losing. You have a sack outlet, and you have, like, uh, what is that ability? It's not scry, but it is... It, surveil? Yes, yeah. it, you've got surveil on a sack. Like, it's, what a great card. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's vampire, it's rogue, so it's very, very relevant tribes as well. Like, this is awesome, and especially in, like, a Edgar Markov kind of deck, where you're making all mm -hmm. these, like, 1-1 one, one beater vampire tokens. Like, Sanguine Spy is awesome. Yeah, I really like it. This next one I really liked as well. I uh, I cracked a few of these, and I was like, it's colors of annoying stuff I like. 
Scheming Fence. It's one white, one blue for a 2-3 human citizen. When it enters the battlefield, choose an on-land permanent. Activated abilities of the chosen permanent can't be activated. I love it. It has all activated abilities of the chosen permanent, except for loyalty abilities, so you can't planeswalkers with it, sadly. And you can spend mana as though or mana of any color to activate. So you can shut planeswalkers down, you just can't use their abilities. Mm-hmm. But still, like, it's awesome. There's, like, yeah, so I'm many sure. good creatures or artifacts that you can... Th- this is hilarious, by the way, if somebody's playing that bootleggers stash thing, and then you just... <laughs> now your lands do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this is, uh... This is gonna make a splash, for sure. Yeah. This next it, thing seems seems like something you'd be interested in, Zach. Sure, it's Shadow Mortality. It's 13 black black for a 7-7 seven, seven avatar. If your life total is less than your starting life total, this spell costs X less to cast for X is the difference. Yeah. I feel like this is just a new death shadow. Yeah. I've seen just so many decks, so many of the ninjutsu decks right now, and I know that this is going to hit me for 15. <laughs> It probably is. See, that's where I would be like, oh, cool. I'm going to find a way to abuse the CMC and, you know, hurt someone. I know it's going to hurt me for 15. It's going to just crush my soul. Mm -hmm. And once again, alt art, absolutely stunning. Yeah. This Good uh, good job. This one I think is pretty cool, too, because I like politics-y cards. You've got Shakedown Heavy, two and a black for a 6-4 Ogre Warrior with Menace. That's big. Uh, whenever it attacks, defending player can have you draw a card. If you do, untap it and remove it from combat. I love it. I love that <laughs> ability. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Early, early draw in mono black is great. And if you don't want to take my deal, then you'll take my six damage. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's a that card bonks. That's my draw engine for sure. Um, someone take this next one because I won't be a part of it anymore. I just can't. Yeah. So this next one is Soul of Emancipation for green, white, blue for a 5-7 avatar. And when Soul of Emancipation enters the battlefield, destroy up to three other target non-land permanents. For each of those permanents, this controller creates a 3-3 white angel creature token with flying. Yeah, that's all yeah. those angels are doing are getting swung at you. You've got a 7-7 seven, seven, or a 5-7, seven, 7 mana ETB that's giving you 9 damage of oh. aggro. I guess you could just like target your treasure to- your own treasure tokens as well because it doesn't say it has to be uh, opponents, yeah. opponents but still meh. yeah meh it's, <laughs> it's just meh it's art is cool it's, I got something positive to say yeah the art's cool that's really high costed once it's out sure it would be right. cool to flicker and stuff but again like it's it's rough because again yeah. like it's it's really fun to blow up everyone's stuff with like a good like let's say I have infinite mana and dead eye navigator and I blow up everything on the board of everyone. Well that stops and now every permanent is a three three angel that's gonna attack me. Yikes. Yeah. Right? Like yikes. Three three flyer and angel is it's a lot. And I can blow those angels up if I can keep flickering it, but then they're still just angels and they're still gonna hit me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, You're gonna make some somebody's gonna be mad. Yeah, I just, I just meh. Yeah. Then we've got Spara Headquarters. We've got the Bant. Uh, there we go. We've got something Bant I like. Forest yeah. Plains Island Trial. Yeah, this is probably the best Bant card in the set. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Zach, this is this is a U card for sure. Uh, we have Structural Assault. It's three double red for a sorcery. You destroy all artifacts. Then Structural Assault deals damage to each creature equal to the number of artifacts that were put into the graveyard from the battlefield this turn. I do like that. Yeah, this is a goodbye treasure tokens card. Yes. But it's also a hello, um, brush honor card. Yeah. Then we have Tenacious Underdog, one and a black for a three two human warrior with blitz four and two life, and then you can cast it from your graveyard using its blitz ability. Yeah. 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 Sorry, uh, Sloppy. Yeah, the next one is a uh, Tolu's Clever Conductor. Uh, hybrid Azorius, blue hybrid Demir for a 3-1 legendary creature human rogue. When Tolu's clever conductor enters the battlefield, it connives. So draw a card, then discard a card. If you discard an on-land card, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. And whenever you discard one or more cards, exile them from your graveyard. And when Tolu's dies, put the cards exiled with it into their owner's hand. Love it. And the altar is awesome. I think it's so cool. Yeah. And again... It's it's the hybrid colors. It's the stuff I like. This is good. This is good. Why couldn't they just? Why couldn't Bant be normal for once? 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I just, like I said, I, I like the ability to, I like to draw. I like the cards in my hand. So for me, this is like, I would make a deck with the connives mechanics specifically so I can get my cards back. Mm. Well, if you're playing black or gray, it is your hand, sir. Eh. I, uh, like I said, I really, really like that card. I think it's like really, really fun. And I love the madness colors. So I think that this and like Rafine are kind of a deck that goes together pretty well. Yeah, for sure. The next one has my my it's my kind of stuff all written all over it. It's Topiary Stomper. One double green for a plant dinosaur four four with vigilance. When it enters search library for a basic land, put on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. It can't attack or block unless you control seven or more lands. But for me, this is just ETB lands. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just I like getting lands. Um, Zach. Yes, we have Undercover Operative. Two double blue for a 0-0 zero zero shapeshifter rogue. You may have Undercover Operative enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it enters with a shield counter on it if you control that creature. I like awesome. it. Awesome card. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. That's weird. Sloth, you want to take this one? Sure. <laughs> So the next one is uh, Unleash the Inferno, one black, red, green for an instant. Unleash the Inferno deals seven damage to target creature or planeswalker. When it deals excess damage this way, destroy target artifact or enchantment that an opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to the amount of excess damage. I think that's cool. Yeah, that's <laughs> very cool. That's neat. That, I like that a lot, actually. That's really cool removal. Uh, yeah, I you take this one because I want the next one. Oh, unlicensed hearse. We got a two cost artifact. That's a star star. It's a vehicle. You can tap it to exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. Unlicensed hearse power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards exiled with it. And you crew two. That's really flavorful and cool. I like that. Yeah. Oof. The next one I really like. I, I love all these kind of texts. Uh, <laughs> it is just one white, one blue, one black. Instant can't be countered. It's void rend. Destroy target non land permanent. Whatever I don't like is gone. Yes. I love, yeah. love it. It's very, very good. This one I didn't really like too much either. I'm going to talk about this one. Widespread thieving. Uh, actually, Zach, this is you. Please. The, the <laughs> next two. It, it's, <laughs> it's on thief. Well, let me talk about widespread thieving then. Yeah. It's two and a red for an enchantment with hideaway five. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a treasure token. Then you, uh, then you may pay Wooberg. If you do, you may play that exiled card without paying its mana cost. I don't like it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's like maybe good at like you said in that uh it's not nickel the niv missed kind of deck right you, you mm -hmm. play you get your try i just i, I don't know i don't like it it's not for yeah. me i wanted why couldn't it have been like you may pay one red and four colorless that's yeah. where i would have liked it. it because it completely shuts down did i did i miss a red hideaway or is this is the red hideaway no, it's right the red one it's just it, you can't use it in red all the other ones you can use in monocolored and this so one's just I, like only is, a <laughs> Suck it. It's just annoying. Yeah. yeah. And it sucks because I like the art and I think the name is silly. Yeah. Like, whatever. All right. I'm moving on. Wiretapping. Four and a blue for an enchantment. Hideaway five. I better like this one. Whenever you draw your first card during each of your draw steps, draw a card. Okay. Then if you have nine or more cards in your hand, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Okay. I like this one. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Next, extra draw enchantment. Cool. Yeah. And lets you possibly get something big off. I, that's, I got no problem with that one. Yeah, that's fine. I do have a problem with this next one. I just, I can't, I can't. There's a lot of silly things in in Magic, but I just can't wrap my head around this being in it. Workshop, what workshop? War Chief. Yeah. A ride over the you. wrench is where I draw the line. Yeah. No. Three double green for a random warrior five three or trample. When it ETBs, you gain three life. When it dies, you create a four four green rhino warrior creature token and it has blitz for four double green. I think that's fine. Yeah, mm, mm, I don't know. I would play this card. Uh, all right. Uh, then we have Xander's Lounge. We've got the Grixis Triumph. Mm. I'll just end nice the last one as well. We also have Zeatora's Proving Ground, Swamp Mountain <laughs> Forest Triumph, which is a, that's a very very relevant one. Also, uh, I really like the two of them are boxing rings. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. as, as soon as that was spoiled, that went right into my Zandiv deck. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. And then somebody take this last Zeatora's Envoy. Um, yeah, I can talk about the Envoy. Sure. Uh, it's one in Jund. <laughs> one in Jund. It's a 5-4 of Ashina Warrior with Trample. When it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top card of your library. You may play a land from the top of your library or cast a spell with mana value less than or equal to the damage dealt from the 
Uh, okay, damage all from the top of your library without paying its mana cost. If you don't put that land, I put that card in your hand, and it blitz for two and jund. This card's actually really cool. Yeah, I think it's pretty solid. Its artwork is very wicked. Yeah, it's just a dude in a suit with a hammer. Yeah, the, I like that. The alt art looks looks deadly. Yeah, a dude in a suit with a hammer. I like that. Now I have to quickly rip through some commons and uncommons that are just worth noting in the set. Number one is an offer you can't refuse. I think this is an amazing card. It's one blue yeah. for an instant counter target non creature spell. Its controller creates two uh, treasure tokens. I don't care about people having two treasure tokens. The fact that I can, like, one blue mana blow a psych rift off the board is awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it's a great counter spell. Uh, the counter target non creature spell isn't, it's generally not creatures that I, I need a counter for. It's usually someone's doing something annoying. I just, I really, really like this. I don't know. It's, it's just, that's, that's one. What, what are your thoughts on that one, Zach? I think it's fine. Um, I, I would rather give someone two, uh, you know, two treasure tokens and a psychrift go off because I'm, you know, I don't think game to prolong or I don't want my board dealt with. Or if someone's going to go ahead and try to exile my graveyard, I'd rather not that happen. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next I think is a really, really cool additional cycle. Like I was already happy with the amount of legendary creatures we got in this, but they gave us an uncommon cycle as well. So the Grixis one is Cormella Glamour Thief. It is one, a blue, a black, a red for a two, four vampire rogue with haste. It has one in the tap. You add one blue, black, red, spend it only to cast instant or sorceries. And when Cormella dies, return up to one target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. I really, really like this card. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. Like I said, I'm just going to rip through these. Uh, the next card, again, Bant. I was finally excited for something. And then it's just, I can't even for the life of me understand why they would have worded it this way. It is nonsensically worded for what it does. It's Lagrella the Magpie. It's Bant for a 2-3 or three human soldier. Again, tribes I like. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of other target creatures controlled by different players until Lagrella leaves the battlefield. When an exiled card enters the battlefield under your control, put two one one counters on it. And what it actually does is it exiles up to one card per player. That any number does nothing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't. I have no idea why they would not say for each player exile up to one and would write exile any number because exile any number of other target creatures to me means specifically that. That's I don't know. I uh I was I was excited for it and then when they're just like oh yeah it works this way i'm like nah this is again meh i'm gonna build it of course because i like to flicker things but i'm not happy about it yeah um then we have mage's attendant which was another one that i thought was just worth talking about uh two and a white for a cat rogue three two and when it enters you create a one one blue wizard token with pay one sack this creature counter target non-creature spell and that's controller pays one that's a great enters the battlefield effect yeah i would agree with that and especially because it's in mono white it gives you like uh ability to have like some some counter spell on it because it says blue, it has no blue in it. So it can go in a mono blue deck or a mono white deck. I really like that one. Um mm-hmm. the Jund of the commanders is Mr. Orfeo the Boulder. It's one in Jund, again. Funny. Uh Rhino Warrior, two four, and whenever you attack, double target creatures power until the end of the turn. I'm gonna do that with the envoy. Yeah, right. It's it's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Public Enemy is a uh, enchantment as well that I was talking very like I really really like. Number one, you can fetch this with Zer, uh, Zer the Enchanter, which is awesome. But uh, it's two and a blue for an enchantment or an enchant creature. All creatures attack enchanted creatures controller each combat if able. When enchanted creature dies, draw a card. This is an awesome card. Like it's just it's so good. The ability to direct everything at someone else's things, not even, it's not even if they want to attack, they have to attack it. They have to attack it. So you play this in your second main phase against somebody, and they either have to block or just get swung at. And if it's on a tapped creature like Zach, let's say Zach, for instance, attacks me with something, and I'm like, don't do it. And he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm like, fine, I'll put it on his tapped creature, and I'm everyone just swings out at Zach. Yeah. So, yeah. so I can get rid of it. Oh, I love it. I think it's a very, very good one. Uh, the next one is one that I want to build on. Like I said, I've got a few of these to rifle through. Uh, it's Quasar, Augur of Agonies. It's the uh, Esper, one of the uncommon cycles. Uh, it's one, one white, one blue, one black for a legendary creature, Cephalid Advisor. Again, a great tribe, as Zach said. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a 3-4, and whenever you draw a card, target opponent loses a life and you gain a life. That's I love that kind of a mechanic, right? So you've, you've got the 
the direction of the deck built right into it, right? You don't need to search for your drain. So your whole deck is just going to be, at least when I'm building this, is going to be draw removal and like clone this. Yes. Yeah. It's just like, just things like psychosis crawler, things that hurt the table. When I draw, like I, I just, I, I like all of it. It's, and it loses life. So people can't as easily get around it. Um, the next one is my actual favorite card of the set, but not, but one of them. Uh, it's Rocco Cabaretti Caterer. It's X, one red, one green, and one white, and it's a 3-1 Elf Druid. Those are tribes I love for both of them. Uh, this is actually what I'm changing one of my competitive decks over to to see how it can function. Uh, it's when Rocco enters the battlefield. If you cast it, you can search your library for a creature card with mana value X or less, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. This, to me, is just like the ideal food chain commander because I can get everything I want out really, really fast and easy. I just, I mm-hmm. really, really like this card. And um, it's, uh, I, I, I'm i going to put Zerda in the deck as well, for instance. And like Zerda with a Basalt Monolith is infinite colorless mana. So if I cast Rocco the first time, I can go kit like a Prismite and have like my sacrifice, like I, or uh, not my sacrifice, my filter to continue getting everything. I just really, really like the card. I think it's flavorful, but it's, I like it from like a competitive standpoint of trying to make a Naya competitive deck, which I have never made. Yeah, it seems really cool. Yeah. Then we've got Rumor Gatherer, which was just a really, really good white card. Elf Wizard, one double white for a 2-1. Uh, whenever another creature enters under your control, scry one. If it's the second time it uh, resolved this turn, draw a card. That's awesome for a little bit of card draw, and it always it always is going to go off. And then there's like a little bear in the background holding a suitcase. Everyone knows I like this card. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, we've got Slip Out the Back, which I think is just a phenomenal blue card. One mana for an instant. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature and phases out. That's awesome offense, awesome defense. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Sky Crier, I like Group Hug. It's one and a white, flying lifelink, bird citizen, 1-1. One, one. And then it has three and a white, you and target opponent each draw a card. I love mana sync abilities, and there's so many decks I always need a mana sync ability in it. And this buys a little bit of goodwill with it of like, I'm going to draw Zach, you draw with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it. Yeah, then we have uh, Witty Rose Master, which is a card that I just couldn't not mention as a common. It's two and a red for a 3-2 Devil Citizen, and it has Alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, it deals one damage to each opponent. That's so good. Perforos has ended so many games for so many people. This is just a weaker version of it that's obviously not indestructible and not a legendary god, but blah, 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 blah. I just think it's a great ability. Yeah. Um, then yeah. I have, yeah, we're almost we're almost done these ones. I'm, I'm ripping through them. I know, I know. Uh, we've got Glittering Stockpile, another card that I think is phenomenal, and especially in like Boros decks that need all the help they can get. Uh, it's two and a red for an artifact treasure, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, it has tap to add a red mana, put a stash counter on Glittering Stockpile. Then it has tap sack Glittering Stockpile, add X mana of any one color where X is the number of stash counters on. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's fine too. Yes. And then do you do you want to take the very last one of the commons that needs to be talked about? Yes, I do. It's a, co- um, a common or uncommon, <laughs> I don't know. Regardless, I would be remiss to not talk about how hilarious I love this card. Uh, as always, I have to shout out to my best friend, Benson. This is Witness Protection. As one blue for an enchantment aura, you enchant creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a green and white citizen creature with base power and toughness. <laughs> one one named legitimate business person. Uh, it loses all other colors and card types and creature types and name. <laughs> just, uh, if just, you... just the fact that you turned my best creature into a legitimate business person is so funny. It's so funny. Uh, if, you, if you don't follow Benson on Instagram, that's what he's changed his Instagram name to. Legitimate business person. And he is currently yeah. brewing a Zer the Enchanter deck with this as the main card he's getting and winning with. Oh, it's such a it's such a stupid card. <laughs> Legitimate it's business a, person. It's a very good card, honestly. I need some, common. I need someone to make me up a legitimate business person, like oversized sleeve or something that I can throw over top of people's things. Yes, it, it's the cost of doing business. I just, I love this card so much. It's super funny. It's very, it's actually very strong too. Um, we've gone on like a fair bit of time, but like, let's quickly rip through some of these commander ones because like, there's. Obviously, some we're a commander podcast. There's commander cards. Um, we we won't like touch on the reprints or the deck lists from them. Um, the first one we've got is Anhelo the Painter. It's one blue, one black, one red. Death Touch, one three vampire assassin. The first instant sorcery you cast each spell has casualty two. 
As you cast it, you can sack a creature, two or greater, blah, blah, blah. I think that's a really cool ability. Yeah, I'm actually going to build this commander deck as well. This was the other one I was talking about, and Grixis that I really want to build. Yeah, I like that one. Um, the next one is like a commander-only card, like our set booster-only card, which I hate that they're doing. I just can't stand it. And it's just, eh. It's uh, Benny Brax, a zoologist. Three and a white for a legendary elf druid, 3-2 with Convoke, which I love. Beginning of each end step, if you create a, a token, this turn, draw a card. I think that's awesome, but like... I love this card. Yeah, I think it's super cool. Um, I feel like Zach wants this one. Yeah, um, it's Hazine Toolbox Tour. It's Jund, so black, red, green. For a uh, Devil Rogue 3-3 three is a legendary creature. Each creature... I'm sorry, let me pull it up because it's a little too hard to read. Each creature you cast with mana value 4 or greater has Blitz. The Blitz cost is equal to its mana cost. And then Blitz cost, you pay cost one less for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. It's super, super good. I'm excited to try to build around this guy. Nice. Slothy, do you want the second um, I do. The next one is uh, Kami's Obscura Oculus. Uh, one white, blue, black for a creature set like Rogue 2-4. Whenever you attack, target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. It connives, then choose another attacking creature with lesser power. That creature gains double strike until end of turn. Yeah, it's pretty that, cool. That, that's a lot of words. And I they're just, all good. I just yeah, like that yeah. you can, it has block. To, to me, I read this card as hit people with phage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hit people with unblockable phage and infect things. Be a degenerate. Obscura. <laughs> uh, can I take this next one as well? Yeah, kid. Yeah, so this next one is uh, Kid Kanto Mayhem Diva. One red, green, white for a 3 3 legendary creature cat barred druid. Um, when Kid Kanto enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 green, white citizen creature token. At the beginning of combat on each player's turn, you may tap two untapped creatures you control. When you do, target creature that player controls gets plus two, plus two, and gains travel until end of turn and goad that creature. I think that's pretty cool. I like that's the nice. bard creature type. Mm. Zach, do you want to take this next one? Because I really want the one after it. Which one is that? Is that Coors? Yeah. Coors, Cross, um, whatever it is. Another cat in a suit. Yep. Uh, he's a defense contractor. He's one in Bant. Um, he's a cat advisor for 2-4. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a shield counter on target creature and opponent controls. Whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, tap that creature and goad it. It gains trample until your next turn. That's exactly what the people wanted. Bant goad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's actually I I know you've been ragging on it. I think it's actually really cool. Everyone's but... clamoring for it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. I, oh. I I just wish I could put it in. I, I want to put it in a four color deck and have that black happened. in it, so I can. That's fair. So I could do um, Volrath Shape Stealer. You said that you haven't been looking through the commander decks, like you haven't seen these ones. Hmm. Okay, let me, so here's the next one. This is one I'm very excited to build. Uh, this is Parney's The Subtle Brush. It's two, one blue, one black, one red for a 4-4 four, four vampire wizard. Whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, counter it unless they pay for life. That's awesome for every permanent you control. And it's whenever you copy a spell, up to one target opponent may also copy the spell. They, uh, they may choose new targets for the copy. So I really like the idea of like a Grixis group hug give people my spells card. I, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Like, especially like if I can get like a scheming symmetry off and they can be like, all right, well, I'll give you another one. I, just, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. I, just, I like it. Um, yeah. Someone take the next one. Cause I must talk about Fabian. Sure. Um, next one is uh Perry, the pulverizer one green, white, blue for a three, three legendary creature, rhino soldier. Uh, when Perry enters the battlefield, put a shield counter on target creature. And whenever Perry attacks, Target creature you control gains trample and gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of different kinds of counters among permanents you control. Pretty cool. What was the <laughs> card from Akoria that was like keyword soup? Was it Otrimi? Yes. No, not Otrimi. No. Um, oh, what's his name? Hold on. Otrimi was the Simic one. That's not it. It's, Otrimi is um, the mutate one. It's the Abzan. It's um, Cathro. Yep, Cathro. Cathro. Yeah, and I didn't like Cathro. So maybe that's why I didn't like this one because I also I just I tried to get excited for Cathrol, but like they gave we me were more. Well, yeah. What was the other one in that deck? What's his name? Tam. Yep. How are you gonna yep. give me? How are you gonna give me Tam and try to get me excited for Cathrol? It's not happening. And we yeah. had Nithroi. Yeah. Like right? um, the next one, I love because 
Again, as I've mentioned, I have so many Selvala decks. This is one of my favorite mechanics in Magic. Uh, this is Fabian Boss's Confident. It's three, one, green, one, or one red, one green, one white. A three, six, legendary cat advisor. Creature tokens you control have haste. Awesome. Parlay. At the beginning of combat on your turn, each player reveals the top card of their library. For each land revealed this way, you get a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen token. Then creatures you control get 1-1 one, one until end of turn for each non-land card revealed this way. Then each player draws a card. I love it. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. I just don't like the colors. I love it. But so <laughs> since since you haven't been reading things, Zach, the next one is yours to take and to get excited uh, about. Yeah, I was I was gonna say I want to take this one. It's the Beamtown Bullies. It's one and Jund, as we've been talking about. It's a four four legendary creature, Ogre Devil Warrior. It has vigilance and haste. You tap it. Target opponent whose turn it is puts target non legendary creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under their control. It gains haste. Goaded. At the beginning of the next end step, exile it. This card's sick. Everyone, everyone keeps using Leveler in it, and they're all monsters. <laughs> they are it's very funny uh, but I've, yeah I've, I've particularly bought an eater of days for it so that i can make people skip their turns that's funny <laughs> i don't want to build this anymore never mind i'm moving on uh, no see zach would build it the fun way but like everyone, there's so many degenerate things to do with this i'm very sad again i've talked about phage that it's non-legendary because i would have loved to put phage into play under people's control to, to be honest i want to try to build this as a group hug deck that's cool you yep. know, like play like um like some like Marionette Master or like Captain Lannery Storm or something like that where people get like benefits from attacking or something like that. <laughs> I like I think Beamtown Bullies is very, very cool. Slothy, do you mm-hmm. want to take this uh this artifact so I could take this next one? Yes. Next one is a threefold signal. It's an artifact for three. When it enters a battlefield, it's gray three, and each spell you cast that's exactly three colors has replicate three. Yeah, so when you cast it, you can copy it if you pay its replica cost. Replicate cost. Yeah. I think that's super cool. The next one I think is hilarious because number one is the artwork just looks like somebody photoshopped me with a mustache on a giant sphinx body, and that to me <laughs> is comedy gold. I, I, oh I think it's so funny that that's what it looks like. Uh, we've got Tivit, Seller of Secrets, and this is the whole reason I bought this commander deck. Like The whole reason I did the pre-order was seeing this card revealed. Uh, it's three, one white, one blue, one black for a Sphinx with flying ward 366. It's a Sphinx rogue. I love the stats on it already, but it has Council's Dilemma, and this is this is where I love it. Um, whenever it enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, starting with you, each player votes for evidence or bribery. For each evidence vote, investigate. For each bribery vote, create a treasure token. And when voting, you get an additional... Uh, you can vote an additional time. I, I love it. I've loved all of those cards. This is obviously a spot you put expropriate in. Like, I, it's, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, yeah. just, I just love the fact that you're getting treasures or clues. I, I never shut up about how much I like clue tokens, so. Yeah, expropriate. Uh, you understand, Zach. You get it. But this is, like <laughs> like I said, this is just, like, everything I want in, like, I've always wanted to do the vote kind of decks. I started building the Kenrith's Council, like, five-color vote, and this is just, like, a better... Will of the Council on ETB or on combat damage to a player is awesome. Ward 3 is yeah. really, really good protection. Like, that's really... You want a path to exile it for four? Grow up. <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's it's a fun deck, for sure. I'm probably going to do a deck tech on it. The deck tech is going to be, like, very politics-heavy, and one of the questions I'm going to ask in the game is, do you guys want me to end the game? And if they do, I'm going to fracture Identity Phage. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm loving every part of this deck. I think it's super fun. I just I can't get over how funny the artwork is. But yeah, no, I, I love it. I love treasure tokens. I love investigate tokens. This was this was one that I just immediately started brewing. Like uh the list for all of the vote cards went out to my LGS like the day I saw this. Like I the minute I saw it, I was like, give me all the vote cards in these colors. That's funny. Nice. It's very funny. Um someone wanna take this extortionist. Sure. So uh Aerial Extortionist, it's uh three double white for a four three bird soldier. Uh, with flying, whenever aerial extortionist enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, exile up to one target non land permanent. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it. And whenever another player casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. Pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Zach, do you want to take this toolkit because you actually like these mechanics and I don't? Yep. It's Agent's Toolkit. It's one green and a blue for an artifact. It's a clue. Oh, you got me um, back in. 
Okay, <laughs> reckon. Agent Toolkit enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter, a flying counter, a death touch counter, and a shield counter on it. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may move a counter from Agent Toolkit onto that creature. You can pay to sacrifice it and uh, sacrifice Agent Toolkit and draw a card. Yeah, this card's super, super sick. What a phenomenal card to be able to proliferate, by the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, that comes with a lot of counters on it. Like, that's like an Atraxadex staple. Yep. We also have Angelic Sleuth, two and a white for an Angel Advisor. Two, three. I'm loving these low-cost angels. Uh, flying whenever another permanent you control leaves the battlefield. have had counters on it, investigate. Love it. That's good. Um, someone with the Audacious. Sure. Uh, audacious Swap, three and a red for an instant with Casualty, two. And the owner of target non-enchantment permanent shuffles it into their library, then exiles the top card of their library. If it's a land card, they put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, they may cast it without paying its mana cost. I love it. Just another kind of Chaos Warp card. Love, love, mm-hmm. love it. Yeah. Especially with the Casualty, too. Yeah. Um, what are we on to now? Avon Courier. Okay. Avon Courier is one in a blue for a Bird Advisor 1-1 one, one with flying. When it attacks, you choose a counter on a permanent you control. Put a counter of that kind on target permanent you control if it doesn't have a counter of that kind on it. That's actually really cool. I think that's very cool to proliferate those things around. Mm-hmm. We have... Yeah, does it... Oh. Does that mean I have to build a Traxa? Maybe. Ugh. You could build a fun Traxa with this. Uh, we've got Avon Mimeomancer, and I don't know if it's new, but I've never seen it. It's one, one white, one blue for a bird wizard, three, one flying. Being of your upkeep, you may put a feather counter on target creature. If you do, uh, that creature has base power and toughness, three, one, and flying for as long as it has a feather counter on it. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. That's, that's funny. It's. I think that's, again, offensive and defensive, really cool. You can, like, turn people's things into little 3-1 dinky creatures, or you can turn your stuff into 3-1 flyers. I love it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think this Bellowing Mauler's new. I've got to talk about Bess, by the way, so. Yeah. yeah. Bellowing Mauler is new. Uh, this uh, 4 and a black for a 4-6 Ogre Warrior. At the beginning of your end step, each player loses 4 life unless they sacrifice a non-token creature. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bess is awesome. Bess, it, Bess Soul Nourisher. I think the artwork's really cool, too. Uh, one one green one white for a human citizen one one. Whenever one or more creatures with base power and toughness one one enter the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on best soul nourisher. When best attacks each other creature you control with base power or toughness one one gets x x tones of turn, where x is the number of one one counters on best. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's really really cool. Like a one one tribal where you've got like the anthem from the command zone. I think that's really really cool. Yeah, Obviously, best seems really. Yeah, like. like I, I, I was gonna say, like Beth definitely, sorry, Beth definitely screams your play style, but I think she's very powerful. Yeah, I just um, I like building Boros decks, especially this is just Boros play style in a different color. Mm-hmm. Make yeah. junk, make junk one one creatures and have them monsters. That seems like fun. Well, I know, like I, making junk creatures. You know monsters. what I mean? Like how 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 think of this? Like these are these are some very easy creatures to get out in my first few turns. A Birds of Paradise, a Gilded Goose, a Soul Warden, a Mother of Runes. So, like, there, I'm going to swing at you with my 5-5 five, five Birds of Paradise. I Look, you got me at Birds of Paradise. I love killing people at Birds of Paradise. Oh, wait, wait. They need yeah. base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Not Birds of Paradise. Oh, never but, mind. But, but the other ones. <laughs> well, that makes me less sad. And still, still good. Still good. I'll build the deck. Uh, we also have Body Count. It's got two and a black. Instant has spectacle. Uh, you can cast it for its spectacle cost, other than its other cost of an opponent uh, lost life. Draw a card for each creature that died under your control this turn. That's that's Zach's bread and butter. Yeah, Zach lives on pretty. That. Yeah, I'll body count everyone. Yeah. I'll body count out the game. Uh, does someone want this one? Yeah, boss. Oh, um, you sure. can take it. Oh, go for it. Uh, it's boss's chauffeur. It is a zero zero elf citizen. When it enters it enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to one plus a number of other creatures you control. It has alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on boss's chauffeur. And when it dies, you create a one one green and white citizen creature token for each plus one plus one counter on it. Strong. That's so silly. Oh, and it's five mana, it's four and a white. Yeah. Yeah. Strong, strong card. It comes in huge if you have a big board. It comes in as a one one, but yeah, like just the it constantly getting one one, it generating creatures. I, I think this one could get really silly really quickly. I agree with that. Slothy. 
this obviously. Yeah, absolutely. So this next one is a boxing ring, one in a green for an artifact. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it fights up to one target creature you don't control with the same mana value, and you can tap it to create a treasure token. Activate only if you control a creature that fought this turn. Yeah, this is going in Zangief. Yeah. <laughs> the more uh, the more time has gone on, the meaner that deck gets just because they're doing a whole bunch of stuff that just works with it. <laughs> um, I want to talk about this next card because I think it's cool. Go ahead. It's Bribe Taker. It's five and a green for a 6-6 six, six Rhino Warrior or Trample. When it enters the battlefield for each kind of counter or on permits you control, you may put it me may put your choice of a plus one plus one counter or a counter of that kind on bribe taker i think this card is super sick i do too i really like its artwork it's really cool it's really well done Mm -hmm. the cycle that's coming up as well i think is very cool and it's another positive thing i finally have to say about bant we've got broker's confluence is the first one so the confluence cycles back we have two one green one white one blue for an instant choose three and you can choose the same mode more than once proliferate even three proliferates is crazy good Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, target creature phases out. Again, awesome defense and offense. I love phasing and I love that they keep bringing it back. Or counter target activated or triggered ability. And those are those are just phenomenal modes, all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, does someone want to take the Naya Confluence? Sure. So uh Cabaretti Confluence, three red, green, white for a sorcery, two three, you may choose the same mode more than once. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. It gains haste and sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Exile target artifact or enchantment. Or creatures target player controls get plus one, plus one, and first strike until end of turn. Those are great modes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like that first one. I think that's really cool for Anaya. Well, and especially yeah. if you look at it, six mana to make three titans of industry. Yuck. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. a phenomenal ability. Like, the this is a color that has like some good ETB abilities and especially the haste, like even making three Inferno Titans would be great. Mm -hmm. I I just, I really like it. I love the exile ability. And then yeah, in a worst case, if you've got your token swarm, your creatures get three, three first strike. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, We've got uh, Kaldaya guardian. I don't know. Three and a red, three and a green. Sorry. Human soldier (laughs) four three. I don't like human soldier as a green. I I don't like that. Uh, whenever it or another creature you control with mana value four or greater dies, you create two one one green and white citizen tokens, and it has blitz. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, next we have Cephalid Face Taker. It's two and a blue for a one four Cephalid Rogue. It can't uh, can't be blocked. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have Cephalid Face Taker become a copy of another target creature until the end of turn. Except it's one four and has this creature can't be blocked. I love it. I didn't even see yeah, that. That's very cool. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got uh, another, I think, pretty cool card. Change of plans. Uh, X one blue one colorless. Instant. Each of X target creatures you control connive. You may have any number of them phase out. I think that's awesome. A really really mm-hmm. good way to like uh, like loot through your deck fast if you need to and save your creatures. I just like it. In Hanada, that's yeah. all of my creatures. But oh my goodness. Yeah, Hanada's crazy. Uh, we've got contractual safeguard as well, two and a white for an instant with addendum, which I I did like that as well. Uh, if you cast a spell during your main phase, put a shield cre- uh, shield counter on a creature you control, and then choose a count ca- uh, kind of counter on a creature you control. Put a counter of that kind on each other creature you control. So if it's in your main phase, you can give everything a shield counter. That's a very strong ability. The shield counters are cool, mm-hmm. or indestructible if you think about it. Yeah, I think that's really really cool. Um, Zach, you want this one? Sure, it's Crash the Party. It's five and a green for an instant. You create a tap four for a green rhino creature token for each tapped creature you control. That's silly. That's <laughs> real art- good. That's real good. <laughs> and the artwork is awesome. Yeah, I love it. Some of the artwork, like yeah. I said, some things in here I haven't been into, but I, I love some of these. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one is uh, Cryptic Pursuit. Two blue and a red for an enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand, manifest the top card of your library, and whenever a face-down creature you control dies, exile it. And if it's an instant or sorcery card, you may or exile it. If it's an instant or sorcery card, you may cast the card until the end of your next turn. I think that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool specifically because it gives me the casualty fodder. Yeah, yeah. I think that's awesome. 
We also have currency converter, which I think is like another. Uh, these uh, multi mode cards are really cool. It's one mana for an artifact. Whenever you discard, you can exile that card from your graveyard. Uh, it has two and a tap, draw a card, then discard a card. And then tap it, put a card exiled with currency converter card into your graveyard. If it's a land, create a treasure. If it's a non land, create a 2 2 black rogue. Yeah, seems good. Yeah. <laughs> I love uh, Damning Verdict as well. Yeah, Damning Verdict seems very strong. Yeah. It's a uh, three double white for a sorcery. You destroy all creatures with no counters on them. <laughs> <laughs> that's i would be so annoyed <laughs> yeah it says the flavor text is guilty as charged <laughs> <laughs> really really bang it down uh, uh well, this man. next one i also like it's uh very very unique i wish it was an instant it would make it so good it's declaration in stone and this is the bane of token decks one in a white exile target creature and all other creatures it's, con- uh, it's controller controls with the same name that player investigates for each non-token creature. That's rough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, every token you've made. You get nothing. <laughs> I love this artwork on the next one. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, this next one is uh, Denry uh, Klin, Editor-in-Chief. Two white-blue for another cat in a suit. 2-2. Uh, Denry Klin enters the battlefield with your choice of plus one, plus one, first strike or vigilance counter on it, and whenever a non-token creature you control enters the battlefield, if Denry has counters on it, put the same number and kind of counters on that creature. That's pretty good. I'll give that. I'll give him that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to take the next, like, three. Please. So we have determined iteration. It's one in a red for an enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, populate. The token created this way gains haste. Sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. That's awesome. I, I love you guys know I love cloning things and this is and it has a die trigger, so or it kills itself, so that's even better. You know what's just absolute cancer with this? Hmm. You stack your at the beginning of combat trigger, so if you're helm of the hosting, you'll get your commander and then your commander. Ugh. <laughs> Gross. Wow. Uh, next, we have Dodgy Jalopy. It's tuna green for a, for a star five vehicle with trample. Its power is equal to the highest mana value among creatures. You, this is where you get 15. Yeah. It's cruised for three. Oh, and it has scavenge. Ah, it cruised for three and it has scavenge for tuna green. If you don't know, you can pay tuna green, exile this card from your graveyard, put a number of plus one, plus one counters on it, equal to this card's power and toughness. I'm sorry, power on target creatures. Scavenge only as a sorcery. Sorry, I got so excited. I didn't expect to see Scavenge. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's a that's a unique card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, yeah, and then the final one I want to talk about was Dog Detective. Or Yeah, Dog Detective. It's one in a black. It's a 2-1 human rogue. When it enters the battlefield, you surveil two. And then when an opponent draws their second card... Each turn, you may return Dog Detective from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is one of my like cards I was the most excited for because I'm just making copies of Thousand Year Storm. It's Extravagant Replication. Four, uh, one blue, one blue. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of another target non-land permanent you control. I love it. It's uh, You can't copy it with it, but you can Estrid's Invocation, copy enchantment it. But what an awesome... <laughs> what an awesome card and the, the flavor text is exactly my line of thinking just one aether trigger what do i look like a peasant oh, <laughs> oh, man, oh man i love this card so much i love every single thing about this card oh i love it so much it's i'm, I'm gonna need so many copies of it please sell me them if you have right them. um someone want to take this fallen shinobi uh he's already a card is he yeah well then i don't yep. know i don't know my name just <laughs> we have we have false floor. It's four for an artifact. It enters the battlefield tab. Creatures enter the battlefield tab. Then you can pay two and tap it. You exile false floor. Exile all untapped creatures. Activate only as a sorcery. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that yeah. seems really strong. Yeah. This is a pretty interesting one. Family's favor. Two and a green for an enchantment. Whenever you attack, put a shield counter on target attacking creature. Till end of turn, it gains. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, remove a shield counter from it. If you do draw a card, pretty good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to take this ogre citizen? Uh, for sure. Uh, so this next one is first responder, three and a green for a three-three ogre citizen. Uh, it's got vigilance, and at the beginning of your end step, you may return another creature you control to its owner's hand. Then put a number of plus one plus one counters equal to that creature's power on first responder. That's pretty good in that blitz deck. Yeah, I assume that's what it's from. 
Probably. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I like this one. Flawless Forgery. Three double blue for a sorcery with casualty three. Uh, exile target instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard. Copy that card. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it seems good. Uh, next, we have Gavel of the Righteous. It's two for artifact equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a charge counter on Gavel of the Righteous. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each counter on Gavel of the Righteous. As long as Gavel of Righteous has four or more counters on it, equipped creature has double strike. You can equip by paying, uh, you can pay three or remove a counter from Gavel of the Righteous. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a really unique one. Mm-hmm. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. That's really, really good in like a Rograk deck as well, where it can come down so early. Oh, yeah, for sure. I really, really like this one, Grand Crescendo. Uh, it's X mm-hmm. white, white for an instant, which you'll love to see. Create X, uh, X one, one, green, white citizen creature tokens. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Again, that would be great in the best deck, but like giving your creatures indestructible, giving you a token generation at instant speed, I love it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, next up is Grime Gorger. Uh, two black and a green for a 3-3 creature horror with menace. And whenever Grime Gorger attacks, exile up to one card of each type from defending player's graveyard. Put a plus and plus encounter on Grime Gorger for each card exiled this way. I like the flavor text a lot. Sometimes the trash throws you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they're killing me. Uh, next, we have Indulge in Excess. Indulge is two and a red for sorcery. Whenever a creature you control attacks this turn, create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token that's tapped and attacking. Awesome. And then Excess can, uh, is a sorcery. It can only be done from your graveyard because that's Aftermath. Um, create a treasure token for each creature you control that dealt combat damage to a player this turn. That's, That's really, really powerful, yeah. We also have Jeez. industrial advancement, three and a red. At the beginning of your end step, you may sack a creature. If you do look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the creature's mana value, you can put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom in any order. That's awesome. Especially, again, with the Blitz mechanic, I assume that's what this deck is from, but with Zeatora as well or something like that, like you're already getting your sacrifice. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a very powerful card. Mm-hmm. Um, this one I wanted to talk about as well because I love this card. In too deep, it's double blue for an enchantment aura with split second. Uh, you can enchant creature, planeswalker, or clue, which is funny. Uh, enchanted permanent is a colorless clue artifact with two, sap, attack it, draw a card, and loses all other abilities. That's awesome. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> it says clue. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, next we have Jailbreak. It's one and a white for sorcery. Return target permanent card in an opponent's graveyard to the battlefield under their control. When the permanent enters the battlefield, return up to one target permanent card with equal or lesser mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card is very strong. I, I also have to take the next one too, Sloppy. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's all good. Um, there's no way that I'm not going to blare Dolly Parton when I smash people with this card. Uh, <laughs> Jolene the Plunder Queen. And I love it. Uh, it's 2-1 one, green, 1 red for a 2-2 two, two human warrior. Whenever a player attacks one or more of your opponents, the attacking player creates a treasure token. Awesome. If you would create one or more treasure tokens, instead you create those tokens plus an additional. Awesome. And you can sack five treasure tokens and put a 1-1 one, one counter on Jolene. Jolene, Jolene. <laughs> I love it. I need, to, I need to find a way to clone three of these, like the hell with a host, and then I can just be like, Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. Oh, man, <laughs> man, I love this card. Um, next one up is uh, Killer Service, two in a green for an enchantment. When Killer Service enters the battlefield, create a number of food tokens equal to the number of opponents you have. And at the beginning of your end step, you may pay two and sacrifice a token. If you do, create a 4-4 four, four green rhino warrior creature token. That's pretty good. Pretty good way to filter your tokens. Yeah. We, I got lost. I'm sorry. Uh, lethal Scheme is the next one. So we've got two <laughs> double black for an instant with Convoke. Uh, destroy target creature, planeswalker. Each creature that convoked lethal scheme connives. That seems pretty good. Oh, you've got to take this next one, Zach. This is you. This is you in a nutshell. Yep. We have life insurance. It's three, a white, and a black for an enchantment you have with extort. And then it says whenever a non token creature. <laughs> we, we've been on the episode a long time. Zach, sounds excited. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> whenever a non token creature dies, you lose one life and create a treasure token. That's. Oh, I like that a lot. The flavor text. Oh, all the money in the world can't buy back a pulse. Does he have gold in his mouth, too? Yeah. I think he does. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the same guy from Smothering Tide. What a cool <laughs> card, right? Right. Uh, um, do you want this next one, Slothy? Sure. 
this next one is Life of the Party. Uh, three and a red for a 0-1 elemental with first strike trample haste. When life of the party attacks, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. And when life of the party enters the battlefield, if it's not a token, each opponent creates a token that's a copy of it. The tokens are goaded for the rest of the game. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we've got our next confluence, the Maestros. Uh, three, one black, one red, one blue. Don't know why I said it in that order. Uh, it's a sorcery. Choose three. <laughs> you may choose the same mode more than once. Return target monocolored instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. That's great. Target creature gets minus three, minus three, so you can minus nine something and kill basically anything. Or goad each creature target player controls. I like it. Yeah. Next, we have make an example. It's three and a black for a sorcery. Each opponent separate the creatures they control into two piles. For each opponent, you choose one of their piles. For each, op- I'm sorry, each opponent sacrifices the creatures in the chosen pile. Piles can't be empty. Rough. That's a really strong card. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, I feel like you want the next one too, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> is it, how do you say your name? Is it Mary Mara? The, Mary, Mary? Yeah. Mary the Killing Quill. It's one double black for a legendary creature vampire assassin 3-2. When a, um, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, exile it with a hit counter on it. Assassins, mercenary, and rogues you control have have death touch and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player you may remove a hit counter from a card that player owns in exile if you do draw a card and create two treasure tokens that's awesome it's <laughs> that's also very really good. good with the atrata the silencer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's a good card but i think it's just a really cool the graveyard hate of exiling when they die Ooh, rough yeah that's a that's a unique ability yeah we've got mask of the schemer as well Two and a blue for uh, blue uh, artifact equipment. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, it connives X, where X is the amount of damage it dealt to that player with equipped two. Nice. Seems, seems fine. Oh, I, I, mu- I simply must talk about this one because it's in the Tivit deck. Uh, Master of Ceremonies is three and a white for a Rhino Druid 3-4. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent chooses money, friends, or secrets. For each player who chose money, you and that player each create a treasure token. For each player who chose friends, you and that player each get a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. And for each player who chose secrets, you and that player draw a card. This is an awesome card. Yeah, that's... And the art. Like, I'm just still so drawn in by the art. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I think it's wicked. I think it's a really, really good one. Mm-hmm. Slothy, you want this one? Yeah. Uh, this next one is uh, Mezio Mugger. Uh, four and a red for a 3-3 Bayashino Rogue. Whenever Mezio Mugger attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. You may play those cards this turn, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells, and it has Blitz for two and a red. I love effects like that. Yeah. Just not on not on my Praetors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, we have Misfortune Teller. It's three and a black for a 3-1 human warlock with Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, create a 2-2 two, two black rogue creature token. If it was a land card, create a treasure token. Otherwise, you gain three life. I mean, That's pretty, pretty good. Wicked, yeah. Yeah. And it has Death Touch, so you're like, do you want to block it? Yeah. We have Next of Kin, an enchantment aura, two and a... This one looks like it should be an artifact, art-wise. Two and a green, though. Uh, enchant creature. When enchanted creature dies, you can put a creature you own with lesser mana value from your hand or the command zone onto the battlefield. If you do return next of kin to the battlefield, attach to that creature at the beginning of the next end step. I like that card a lot. I think it's mm-hmm. wicked. Yeah, I think it's got a lot of a lot of good abilities. That's very cool. Uh, someone want to hit this confluence? Sure. It's obs- Oh, go ahead, Salty. Oh, you go ahead. Okay. Um, it's Obscura Confluence. It's one white, blue, black for an instant. You choose, um, sorry, choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. Until the end of your next, uh, until the end of the turn, target creature loses all abilities and has base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Target creature connives and target player returns a creature card from their graveyard to their hand. I wish it would have said, like, becomes a, an ordinary business person. Yeah. Another legitimate business <laughs> person. Like, legitimate, that's such a yeah, funny yeah. card. It's so good. Um, this is another one that I think you'd like, Zach. Do you want to take this one as well? Sure. It's Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer. It's three blue and a black for a legendary creature human wizard, three, three. The spell costs one less to cast for each different mana value among cards in your graveyard. You, whenever you discard a non-land card, you may cast it from your graveyard. That is very cool. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have any just blue black decks right now, so well, that actually wouldn't be bad. And so I, 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 I could be wrong, but I believe with the way that this is worded, 
is um because whenever you discard the card, you may cast it. So this is going to give you pseudo flash. So anything that lets you discard cards like uh like a Makoro or not Makoro um one of the any of the lands that's like tap discard a card or let's say Bazaar of Baghdad right. Sure. A, a common in everyone's collection. A Bazaar of Baghdad where you draw two, discard three. Uh, you'll be able to cast them from your graveyard. So you'll be able to pseudo flash creatures or annoying things into play if people are trying to mess with you. Because I think oh, you'll yeah. cast them during that spell's uh, like resolution. Yeah, that's, I was curious about the timing. I wasn't sure how that worked. I think it works that way. If there's anyone who's a judge listening, please correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I think it's pretty cool. We also have Park Heights Maverick, which I think is really, really cool art-wise. Uh, it's two and a green for a 2-2 human soldier with Dethrone. Whenever it attacks the player with the highest life total or tied for it, you get a 1-1 counter on it. It can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, and when it deals combat damage to a player or dies, proliferate. That is super solid. Yeah. Oh, this one's wicked. Um, I really, really think that this one gives like a lot of new ability for like smothering ties tokens. It's Prosperous Partnership. We have 1-1 one, one red, 1 white. It's an enchantment. When it enters, you create two one one green and white citizen tokens, and then you can tap three and tap creatures you control, create a treasure token. That is really, really strong. Yeah, I think it's can really cool. Uh, so I want to take this next weird hammer one. There's a lot of hammers in this set. <laughs> there, is, there is. It's because of all the riveting. True, true. Um, we have protection racket. It's two and a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, repeat the following process for each opponent in turn order. Reveal the top card of your library. That player may pay life equal to that card's mana value. If they do, exile that card. Otherwise, put it in your hand. I like that. That's pretty cool. It's weird, but I like it. That can really, really drain the table. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's Draco. <laughs> uh, Sloth, you can you just... This one? <laughs> yeah. So this next one is uh, Reign of Riches. Three double red for an enchantment. When Reign of Riches enters the battlefield, create two treasure tokens. The first player you cast each turn, that mana from a treasure token was spent to cast has Cascade. That's a good card. <laughs> that is a good card. That's a good card. Mm-hmm. Zach, this is next is your, up your alley. Reign of the Pit. It's four double black for a sorcery. Each player sacrifices a creature. A create an XX black demon creature token with flying where X is the total power of creatures sacrificed this way. Yeah, that is definitely up my alley. <laughs> the next one we have like a pseudo uh what's it called a pseudo ozolith it's two and a white for resourceful defense and enchantment whenever a permanent you control leaves the battlefield if it had counters on it put those counters on target permanent you control which is awesome so you could put them on resourceful defense and then pay four and a white move any number of counters from target permanent you control to another target permanent you control i think that's a really cool card sorry someone's outside beeping the horn oh no worries okay Oh, I just thought everyone left me. Um, we've also got the Riveter's Confluence. Yeah, I've been I've been really going on. This is a long episode. Uh, Riveter's Confluence is two and Jund for a sorcery. You can choose three. Uh, you draw a card and lose a life. Great ability. One damage to each creature and Planeswalker you don't control. Again, great ability. And you can put a land from your battle, uh, hand onto the battlefield. Land from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. Tap. That's actually awesome. Mm-hmm. That is very good. Someone hit this Rose Room. Yeah, sure. We have Rose Room Treasure. It's three and a red for a 4-3 Ogre Warrior with Alliance. Whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, create a treasure token. If this is the first or second time this ability has resolved this turn, otherwise you may pay X. When you do, Rose Room Treasure deals X damage to any target. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Treasure token ETB. We have Scepter of Celebration, two and a green for an equipment. Enchanted uh, Equip Creature gets 2-0 and Trample. Whenever a Equip Creature deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1-1 one, one green and white Citizen Creature tokens. That could actually be pretty good in uh, Lathril. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, Slothy? Yeah, so next up is Seize the Spotlight, 2 and a red for a sorcery. Uh, each opponent chooses Fame or Fortune for each player who chooses Fame. Uh, gain control of a creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap it, those creatures... Untap those creatures and they gain haste to end of turn. For each player who chose fortune, you draw a card and create a treasure token. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's uh, very good. Uh, Steal their creatures or get treasure and draw. <laughs> yeah. That's silly. We have another I like this. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I like this card. It's Shield Broker. It's three double blue for a three four Cephalid Advisor. When Shield Broker enters the battlefield, put a shield counter on target non commander creature you control. Or I'm sorry, you don't control. You gain control of that creature for as long as it has a shield counter on it. I think that's very silly. It's pretty wicked. 
I love that they had to put non commander creature too. Yes, you can't yeah. commanders. Yeah. We have Sinister Concierge, uh, one and a blue for a human wizard two one when it enter uh, when it dies, sorry. You can exile it and put three time counters on it. If you do, exile up to one other target creature and put three time counters. That's hilarious. Uh, so you can just, when it dies, it gets to spend three, and you can take another creature with it. Yeah. Jeez. That's a really, really good card, especially for the casualty mechanic. Yeah. Hmm. This is an expensive card. Sky Boon Evangelist, four and a white. For a bird advisor, flying, when it enters, support six, six one one counters on each of up to six other target creatures. Uh, put a one one counter on each of up to six other target creatures. Okay. Whenever a creature with a counter on it attacks, when your opponents, that creature gains flying. That's, that's pretty solid. And yeah. it's a bird in a business suit. It is a bird in a business suit. Oh, he's handing out cards to people. Oh, that's really cool. I like this art with what it does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Next, we have Skyway Roberts, three and a blue for a uh, bird rogue, three, three with flying. It has escape, so you can pay three and a blue, exile five cards from uh, your graveyard, and you may cast this card from your graveyard for its escape cost. And then Skyway Robert escapes with um, whenever Skyway Robert deals combat damage to a player, you may cast an artifact, instant or sorcery spell from among the cards you exile with Skyway Robert without paying its mana cost. That's That's solid. pretty strong. Yeah. That's yeah, that's really good actually. Well, I have to take this one because it has hideaway on it and it's a vehicle. So we have Smuggler's Buggy. <laughs> it's four for a five five vehicle with hideaway four. Whenever Smuggler Buggy Smuggler's Buggy deals combat damage to a player, you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost. If you do return Smuggler's Buggy to its owner's hand and it cruise for two. <laughs> Smuggler's Buggy. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of hideaway stuff. The next one is like this year's Dockside, which I'm Again, unhappy that they keep making this stuff because it just the only reason to buy this commander deck at this point, like it comes for this card. Smuggler's Share is like the best white card printed in this set. Uh, it's two and a white for an enchantment at the beginning of each end step. Draw a card for each opponent who drew two or more cards this turn, then create a treasure token for each opponent who had two or more lands enter the battlefield under their control this turn. It, it's a card that in any deck that has white is good. Yeah, it's. That's insane. Yeah, I, I had to reread it as you read it because I was like, "What?" Yeah, I, I kind of don't like cards that are like that because, again, like the, it, it really wrecks the diversity of the format. Because again, there's this. I can't think of a white deck that this wouldn't be good in. Right. Like drawing whenever opponents are drawing is already amazing. Treasure tokens whenever anyone's ramping is amazing. Like, and especially at three mana, it's very good. Yeah, I like this a lot, and it has some of the best art ever. Yeah, the raccoons are awesome. They're siphoning yes. the booze. Uh, one way um, or another, everyone gets paid with their oath. They get it. <laughs> they get it. Next, we have Spellbinding Soprano. It's one in red for a human bard, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever Spellbinding Soprano attacks, instant and, uh, attacks, instant and sorcery spells you cast this turn, cost one less to cast, and it encores for three in a red. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. I love that they've just been stapling um, pass mechanics on cards all through this set. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it. Um, Next, we have Spiteful Repossession. It's four and a red for a sorcery. It um, it deals damage to each opponent who controls more lands than, than you or equal to the... Uh, I'm butchering this, sorry. <laughs> it deals damage to each opponent who controls more lands than you equal to the difference. Then create a number of treasure tokens equal to the damage dealt this way. That's really cool. Solid. Solid card. I uh, I think it's really, really good. We've got Storm of Forms as well three and a blue for an instant when you cast it copy it for each kind of counter among permanents you control you choose new targets for it and return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand i like it i feel like that would what that get, i guess i'd be okay in hinata but not the best right because it doesn't have x yeah exactly you don't have to target you just want a good the a good thing is like a deck that's like storming off right like where whenever you cast or copy something like uh archmage emeritus a lot of t- like this will be able to like draw you a ton of cards with the amount of copies you can get right gotcha okay we've also got swindler scheme two and a blue whenever an opponent casts a spell from their hand you can reveal the top card of your library if it shares a card type with that spell counter it uh and that opponent may cast the revealed card without paying its mana cost that's that's pretty silly <laughs> yeah, let, let me read that again swindler scheme two and a blue whenever an opponent casts a spell from their hand you can reveal the top you may reveal the top card of your library if it shares a card type with that spell, counter that spell, and the opponent may cast the revealed card without paying its mana cost. I live for chaos. I live for it. That's so silly. Oh my goodness. That's a cool card. You, 
that makes the tutors even better, like the top of the deck tutors. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to butcher this name, but next we have Cyrix, Carrier of the Flame. It's two black and a red for a legendary creature, Phoenix. Oh, we got legendary Phoenix. Wow. Uh, three, three flying haze at the beginning of each instep. If a creature card left your graveyard this turn, uh, target Phoenix you control deal damage equal to the power. It's power to any target. Whenever another Phoenix you control dies, you may cast Cyrix, Carrier of the Flame from your graveyard. This is a huge deal. People have been clamoring for a Phoenix Tribal deck for a very long time, and here you go. Yeah, my Perforos deck is my Phoenix Tribal deck, and there's just never been a Phoenix option. I think this is really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That's such a big deal. Um, Did Slothy drop? Yeah, um, he said his Wi-Fi went out. Oh, well, I have I've just thought we've been taking the cards from him and bullying him. Well, we're, we're nearly done anyway. Slothy, you'll get there. Uh, we've got Tenacious Truth. Uh, Truce, one in a white. I really like this card. It's an enchant or enchant opponent. At the beginning of enchanted opponent's end step, you and that player each draw a card. Whenever you attack enchanted opponent or a planeswalker they control, or when they attack you, you sacrifice the truce. <laughs> I feel like you like this card. I love this card so much. I dare people to attack me. That's always how it goes. Uh, next, we have Turf War. It's four and a red for an enchantment. When it enters, uh, Turf War enters the battlefield. For each player, put a contested counter on target land that player controls. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, if that player controls one or more lands with a contested counter on them, that creature's controller gains control of one of those lands of their choice and untaps it. That's fun. really cool. Really fun card, yeah. I like that a lot. Ah, this next one I really like, too. This is a very fun commander to build. Ah, this is what I'm in the midst of building right now. It's Vazzy Keen Negotiator. Uh, two, one black, one red, one green. Uh, it's a human advisor, three, three with haste. You tap it, target opponent creates X treasure tokens, where X is the number of treasure tokens you created this turn. Whenever an opponent casts a spell or activates an ability, if mana from a treasure was spent to cast it or activate it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature, then draw a card. I do like that card I a lot. I really like this one. This is what I want to build as my Jund group hug. That's, I could see that for sure. The next one's pretty uh, silly, too. The Stampede. You take this one. Sure. Um, well, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. There it is. Sorry. For, uh, Vivian Stampede. It's four double green sorcery. Each creature you control gains vigilance, trample, and melee until the end of the turn. And at the beginning of the next main phase this turn, draw a card for each player who was dealt combat damage this turn. Pretty solid. That's silly. Um, I'm going to take Waste yep. Management because I, I think this so. card is silly. Uh, it's two and a black for an instant. It has Kicker, three and a black. Exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. If the spell was kicked, instead, exile target player's graveyard. Create a 2-2 two, two black rogue creature token for each creature card exiled this way. They should have been rats. <laughs> Speaking of the rats. Uh, <laughs> we have Wave of Rats. It's three and a black for a rat with Trample. And when Wave of Rat dies, it deals damage. Um, it deals... If it dealt combat damage to the player this turn, return to the battlefield under its owner's control, and it blitz for four and a black, and it's a four-two. One thing I do want to—I don't think we've actually talked the blitz mechanic. It's if you cast a spell for the blitz cost, it gains haste, and when this creature dies, draw a card, which is awesome, and then sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step, and not exile. So you can constantly blitz these creatures. Yeah, I really, it's really very like it. yeah. It's very easy. The next one's a weird one. Weathered Sentinels. It's three. Uh, three for an artifact, artifact creature wall. It's Defender, Vigilance, Reach, Trample. Uh, it can attack players who attacked you during their last turn as though it didn't have Defender. When it attacks, it gets 3-3 three, three and indestructible until end of turn. Pretty solid. Yeah. Very weird. Yeah, it becomes a 5-8 Vigilance, Reach, Trampler. That's pretty solid. Uh, we've also got Rid of Return. Uh, is that a new one? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Three double black for sorcery. Return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped. Zach loves it. Cypher. Yep. Then you can uh, you can exile the spell encoded on the creature control whenever it deals combat damage to a player. Its controller may cast a copy without paying its mana cost. Pretty solid. Yeah. And we have Xander's Pack. It's four double black for sorcery. Casualty two. Each opponent exiles a top card of their library. You may cast spells from among those cards this turn. If, if you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to that spell's mana value rather than its mana, uh, than pay its mana cost. That's that card's awesome. Sick. That's wicked. Yeah, that's yeah. very good. Especially wow. copying it with that casualty. Each opponent exiles the top card of their life. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. And with that, we're done all of the rares from both of them. Um, if anyone actually got to the end of this, thank you for listening. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, this this is definitely a fun episode. Spoiler season always takes a little while, but it's worth it. Yeah, I, I love going over it and stuff. It's um, I like I even re-listen to our whenever we talk spoilers, I re-listen to it because oftentimes you guys have different takes and it makes me reevaluate some cards. I thought I think it'll be hard to do that with the Bant ones because, again, I don't like them, but yeah, I can't speak nice about Bant. The only Bant thing I've ever liked has been Rabinia. <sighs> it's just I don't know. It just seems so bad compared to the other ones. But uh, going through this and stuff, it's it's excited me some more about some more of these cards. I'm I'm very happy to get it back into building these, and I, I think it's going to be a really good time to build from this set. I'm excited to see what everyone comes up with. Yeah, me too. Yeah, as as always, like share us our lists and everything. Um, Zach, you want to let everyone know where they can find us? Yeah, um, thank you for making it to the end of this episode. If you like what you hear, you can find us on Insta99.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Into the 99, whether that be merch, uh, previous episodes of the podcast, articles by uh, people in the community and our community specifically, and our link to our Discord where you can join, where we're constantly actively talking about commanders, spoilers, or just the game of Magic in general. You can also find games on there with other people, and if there are any cards you saw that you liked, you could always go to abyssproxyshop.com use our promo code IT99 for 10% off your first order of any of his wonderful proxies yeah thank you so much for listening and making it to the end with us and have a great day yep have a good day